What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmare. Jason's mask. Well, here we are again. Another Friday the 13th review. This time the final chapter. Part four. Not my fa- not my favorite, but I really do love the movie. As you guys know, my favorite is part seven. Yours is oh, three, man. right, Thad? That's right. And Brian? Uh, well, I, ha- I break them down to two genres, like uh, humanoid and zombie. So in the humanoid, this is my favorite. Okay. Um, and then in the zombie era, it would be part six. Part six. So what makes part seven your favorite over the final chapter? <laughs> it's funny you ask. It's funny you ask, man. Um, I know the answer. <laughs> I have a few. I have a few answers now. Okay. I'll throw Kane Hodder in there as an answer. Ah, okay. Um, but no, the, like I love the look. The look was my, oh, was my yes. favorite look out of all the Jasons. I like the attitude of him in there, just the movement, mm-hmm. the anger, just everything about that. The story's fun. I think all the stories are fun, but I think the story's fun. I got to be... Here's what made it number one. It used to be my number two. Three was my number one for a while, but... Okay. It went to number wow. Two. Seven over. from three. And the big reason why it's my number one now is because I got the pleasure of being on a panel with them Mm -hmm. um, two years ago now with Tina, Gene Jack, and I always forget his name. Gene Jack. Bad News Cruise. Yeah, Terry Kaiser is awesome. Terry Kaiser. Yeah, I met him. Terry Kaiser, awesome. Hilarious. And I even I got to talk like well, I was on the panel with them. I told him at his table. I was joking around with him, and I told him again on the panel. I was like, "Yeah, I was like, uh, you were my, you were like my least favorite character in the movie because you were such a jerk." But I was like, "You're such an awesome freaking guy. He's so funny and just so nice." Oh, he is. Like when I met him in October, and I'm just you know waiting. To, I'm choosing what picture I want to have him sign. My wife's just like getting to know his whole uh, life story. Just you know, wh- where are you living at now? What do you do? Blah blah blah. <laughs> mm-hmm. When we were taking the photo together, he kept tickling my side, you know, and like just like laughing in my ear. <laughs> oh yeah, he's so nice. And then Laura yeah. Park Lincoln, she was so nice too, so friendly. Everybody, would, they're just real, real, real friendly, and that just makes yeah. you enjoy it more. Like I said, part seven was my second favorite and it just bumped up. So see, see with, with the King hotter, like quadrilogy, I guess you would call it. I don't know how, if there's a word for quadrilogy, I'll just make that up right now. Part like seven it. was probably his best out of the ones he was in. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Kane suffered from having the weakest story lines compared to the ones that came before it. Because part eight just, eh, you know, Jason takes a boat ride. And then New Line bought the rights. And in, I believe, like, you know, if you think about, like, Jason Goes to Hell. Oh, and Jesus. Jason X. They're kind of, like, in their own universe compared to yeah. the 
the previous ones, you know, because it never X never tells you how well how did you get back from Manhattan, you know. Mm-hmm. But apparently, there was comics that told that story how he got back from Manhattan to Crystal Lake. It's like parts one through seven had this certain feel about them. Yes. They all felt like a Friday the 13th, what we'd come to know as Friday the 13th. And then I agree when they went into Manhattan and obviously Jason goes to hell and then Jason X, like you said, they all kind of took a different, different story, different world, different feel mm-hmm. all together. So, and a uh, Jean jacket guy, his name was, um, his name is Nick in the movie. Nick in the movie, right? His real name's Kevin, right? His real name is Kevin uh, Spiritus. Hold on, I can't say. Uh, Kevin, yeah, Spir- Spiritus. Kevin Spiritus. So, yeah, but if you think about it too, going from part six to part seven, look at the clothing. Part six was of its time, and then part seven had like that late eighties, just crappy clothing and. Tease hair where part six is more grounded in reality. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're here to talk about the final love, chapter. Yeah. You know. The final chapter. Um, <clears throat> and speaking of Jason's in the final chapter, I think Ted White's Jason, I, I think this was the most brutal yes. Jason got of the entire series. Like, the oh, yeah. Vicious, angry. I mean, just. I don't know. He had a different feel in this one altogether. Oh, even mm-hmm. when he's killing a hitchhiker, you hear him going, uh, you know, yeah, you do. you do. Um, and you know, he's I think running. everyone who, if you say, what's your favorite part about the final chapter, they all say Jason and Ted white. Yeah. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, cause you know, he is like out of all the actors to play Jason and he has that great resume, you know, he was 58 when he played Jason. How old? Uh, 58. Crazy. He just turned wow. 94 in January. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, he, you know, he was stunt double for uh, John Wayne, Clark Gable. Yep. Um, he was in the Battle of Iwo Jima. So he's, as the guys from, you know, Camp Blood Radio, another podcast, they dubbed him the most interesting Jason. Like they took the image of the most interesting man for the Dos Eki, um commercial and just <laughs> someone photoshopped Ted's white face over him. <laughs> And That's uh, awesome. I was, have you, have you guys met Ted White? I, I have not. Yeah. I met. I honestly him. don't remember. I've met a few, but I don't remember. Like I know, I know for a fact I met King that I know. Yeah. I met Steve dash. I met Ari. I believe I met Ted White. I'd have to look at my autographs where, wherever the hell they are. I yeah. just met CJ Graham last month. Yeah. He's a nice awesome. guy. Nice. He guy. was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And see, he just turned 60 himself and he looks just great for his age, you know, yeah. like he's he can still, play, he is, he can still play Jason today. If, you know, yeah. they were to, you know, so if once this lawsuit's over and Tom McLaughlin, uh, gets to do his script, hire CJ again. Yeah. You know? I agree. He's hoping for it. He's getting ready to do some, some cons where he's going to, he's had a, a mask made like uh, in any of part six where he comes out of the grave. Uh, I was supposed to get a photo op with him at Monster Mania, and that was canceled. It was supposed to be Friday the 13th weekend. He told me he was doing Monster Mania, and and there was one other. He's thinking it's Texas Frightmare, which is in May, which I'm hoping to go to because it's in Dallas, which isn't too far from me. Okay. What part of Texas are you in? And Alice Cooper are all going to be there. Ah, nice. nice. Yeah. That would yeah. be a great photo op if they do like a double photo op thing. They're doing yeah. an in costume photo with um Kane and CJ and then they're doing one with um, <laughs> What's Kane what's Kane going to is he doing Uber? He's doing Uber. Yeah, I guess he was supposed to do that Cherry Hill. I was so excited to do the photo op with uh CJ. I guess it would be my new costume, which is a hybrid of six and seven. So and then the the con was like canceled that Wednesday. And I was just like so, so upset. Um, but he's always at Monster Mania, so I yeah. usually, they do it twice a year in Cherry Hill. So I'll you know next next March, you know I'll go to that one. You showed up at this little tiny con that we've never had before at the Hard Rock Casino here. It was it wasn't marketed very well. It was new. There weren't a lot of people there. I was kind of surprised when I heard his name, mm-hmm. and I was in between. We had like 
Our kids had two games that day. We had all sorts, but there was an hour and a half in between. I said, I got to run to this casino and meet CJ Graham just really quick. Come to find out his wife's family. She has family that lives in Oklahoma city. She's from Oklahoma city. So oh, was, nice. we got a free trip. I came, you know, worked at the convention. She went up to Oklahoma city and spent the weekend there. And, uh, but it was cool because, you know, it, it, there weren't a lot of people there. So he spent close to an hour just telling me stories. He was showing me pictures of him and Alice Cooper back. That's then. cool. Yeah. Telling me all about him and Kane Hodder and how they usually they rip each other. Another and all the different wars. I bought a mask from him and he said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to sign it on the side. He did that for me too. Just to save yeah. you from taking <laughs> shit when you meet Kane. Because he said, have yeah. you met Kane yet? And I said, no, but he's on my list. He said, okay, well, I'm going to leave the middle. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Not for me, but because I don't want you to have to go through the shit you're going to have to go through if somebody else, especially and, Jay Green. And he put a little X there, right? Yeah. Yeah. He did the same thing for me back in Jason Fest because I was actually going to, because um, usually when they're at like um, Monster Mania, they're usually like right next to each other. So I was mm-hmm. going to record Kane, you know, signing the hawk and telling the story behind it because that would have made for a great video. Yeah. 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 So. But yeah, all the cons were getting canceled because I was supposed to go to another one at the end of this month, and that was rescheduled for June. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens with everything going on. Yeah, we will. Yeah. We will. So, all right. So you want to dive into the final chapter? Oh, yeah. (laughs) First, I have a question. Another one that starts with part two. (laughs) Yeah. I was watching it earlier. I'm like, I forgot it started with part two. Yeah, that's what my wife... It's funny because they're doing the part two narration stuff and then they're showing clips from part three. Yeah, they they just jumped around. What what y'all doing? (laughs) Yeah, it's basically like a a recap of the first three because this was supposed to be the final chapter. So, um, you know, and it made uh, quite a ton of money for its budget too. Um, The budget was, because I have my notes here, um uh two point six million and its mm. final take was thirty three million. So there's no way that was gonna be the end. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, that's the end. Just do it and now. Yeah, because Paramount didn't really care about the Friday franchise. It made them money, but they never really like it's a slasher film. And then, of yeah. course, when the money came in, because it was number one opening weekend with $11 million, they're like, oh, well, we got to hold on to this, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> it was the 26th um, highest grossing film of 1984. Is this oh, the yeah. one that knocked E.T. out of place, or was that part three? Uh, let's see what year E.T. came out. Um, there was one of them that, like, put it in second place. And I remember Siskel and Ebert were appalled. Well, they were appalled at all. They uh, called this one a vile e. piece of 80, trash. <laughs> E.T. was 82. Oh, okay. So that so, one. Oh, let's see. While well, you're looking that up, Brian, we got a question from Dano. He asks, if they made another Friday the 13th movie, who would you want to play Jason? Uh, I would like to see Ooh. Derek Mears uh, step into it one more time. You know, I was quite impressed with uh, his performance, and I was hoping we would get one more film before everything happened. So I would like to see Derek, but I'm sure Kane's probably getting his uh, clothes on just in case. Um, Friday Part 3 came out the same year as E.T., so it very well could have been Friday 3. Okay. I think, yeah, the 3D one, because that one ended up being a surprise hit. Yeah. What about you, Thad, um, if, they had a, if they made another Friday film? <sighs> Man, I mean, I would love to see Kane again. Um, I'd also love to see CJ again. He got I think, yeah. and after meeting him and seeing what kind of shape he's in, yeah, I mean, like, I, I think he'd do a good job. And see, he's just—you could tell he would do it again in a second. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you did you happen to see um, Vengeance with his performance as Elias? I didn't. No, yeah, I didn't he, see either. That was like one of the main reasons I wanted to watch Vengeance. <clears> just. Um, for him as Elias, uh, I guess the way they did his, you know, makeup and everything, like, of course he was wearing a wig, but the beard is all his, but he looks so cool. You know, my only, my only complaint with it was there just wasn't enough CJ time. 
You know, I wanted more CJ in there. Gotcha. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with that with um, Kane Hodder. Uh, and then I am going to – I'm actually going to agree with both of you, one from both of you, because I feel like Derek Mears did an amazing job. Yeah. He did. He really did. It's just – you know what it is, too, with the Kane Hodder thing? What? I, everybody knows he's my favorite. I've made that known. Mm-hmm. But, like, watching the um, the documentary from To Hell and Back, mm-hmm. that right there just, like, hit me. And I'm just like, they really fucked him over with the Freddy vs. Jason. Oh, completely. They like, did that, him real yeah. dirty. And he has, like, he has, like, a strong passion for the role. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm just talking from what I've seen from the documentary and from right. meeting him. He has, like, a really strong passion for the role and a really strong passion for his fans. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying that the other guys don't, but just from his documentary, his book, which I read that, I got to get it, and all that good stuff, and he's my favorite. So it would be him, then Derek, and then I'll say CJ, third. Yeah. I'd be happy if they put any of the three in there. I'm worried yeah. they'll, that they'll just go off and do somebody else like they always do. Um, yeah. We got another question, and um, listeners over here, feel free to call in. If you guys got some questions about these Friday the 13th movies, or if you have something to say about Friday the 13th Part 4, you can call in on this app. But um, he said, where should the next Friday the 13th film pick up from? Hmm, That's well, a great question. Cool. I want to see it in the snow. They had all that talk about what? the snow at Crystal Lake. I, I want to see that. Well, if you want to get, you know, even though it's a fan film, Vince Desfanti, who did Never Hike Alone, he yeah. just finished Never Hike in the Snow. Yes. Yeah, and it's a prequel, um, and he is bringing back the great Deputy Rick, uh, Vinny Guastafaro. And when I talked awesome. to Vince back in September, I said, all right, is he going to have his gun with the sausage uh, laser sight on there? <laughs> he said, he'll have bang. something. Bam. Yeah. Bam. That's what it was. So, like, how he's doing it is actually pretty cool because he's doing, like, webisodes um, for this. And then, you know, um, Never Hike in the Snow is a prequel to Never Hike Alone. And then he is going to follow up with a sequel to Never Hike Alone. So, um Never Hike Alone was really good. That's the only fan Friday the 13th fan film I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was good. Yeah, it was really good, um, you know, for being, like, about an hour. Um, yeah. It, they did good with just, like, the two guys, uh, Andrew Lighty, who played uh, Kyle, and then yep. Vince was Jason, of course, or Ghost Jason, however you want to call him. And I like Tommy like, Jarvis is back. Yeah, yeah. And I like the at the end they had the paramedic, his name was Axel. So, yeah, 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 and throughout the film, like <laughs> when four. Kyle gets he's at the camp, they're giving you clues like from like the original film, and little Easter eggs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the other fan films that I watched, of course, was Vengeance. Um, we have the Fall Camp Blood that's coming out in June, which takes place after Part Four. I don't know how what the time frame is, but shortly thereafter. Um, and then I don't know if you guys saw the the scene from Jason Rising that was released Friday on YouTube. I didn't see that one yet. If you have not seen it after your show, go right to YouTube. They released it last Friday, just this past Friday. And my gosh, does it look great? It, uh, yeah. I got homework for you, Brian. What's that? <laughs> it's easy. It's simple. It's open book. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> That's a great movie. <laughs> Matter of fact, for my listeners, you, everybody, I want you all to watch Thanks Killing. Fad knows how much I watch, how much I love that freaking movie. <laughs> I have not watched that yet. It's on my list. But I will say, your homework, Brian. Yeah. The Friday the Thirteenth fan films that you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. I know. I believe they're all on YouTube, right? Uh. Well. Um. Yeah, his uh, they're all, all they're all going to be released on YouTube. So right now, the only one that's really on YouTube is uh, his name was Jason. The other ones have not come out yet, but they will be released on YouTube. So, I, I mean, I mean, like Vengeance. Vengeance is out on YouTube. Oh, Vengeance. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Vengeance is out on YouTube. Vengeance. They call it 2.0 because um, they went back and redid the sound and the special effects. Okay. 
they put an end credit scene um, after the credits. But if you go to my website, and I'll give a little plug, southwestjason.com, um, I have a link with all the fan films that either have come out, starting from His Name Was Jason, and then moving forward with the plethora of fan films. All right, so this is going to be even easier for you. <laughs> post your link, post your website in the Horror Research 30 group after, okay. or whenever you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that way the fans can go check out your awesome cosplay stuff. Thank you. And they can go check out those awesome movies. And there's another one that's being filmed right now, um, which I am, I'm a backer of uh, Jason Rising, mm -hmm. Never Hike in Snow, but I put, you know, I'm a very big backer of, um, his name was Jason. Uh, mm -hmm. Now Dave is, get, Dave the creator and, and actor he got a little bit of grief because they're like, oh, man, you named it after the documentary. You can't do that. Um, but his storyline is really cool because he's taken it back after part one. It takes place two years before part two, so he has the sack. Um, and he's shooting in and around Blairstown. He has mm -hmm. just a few more scenes left, and unfortunately, because of what's going on right now, he had to cancel um, some scenes he was shooting at the end of this month. But he is doing um, scenes at the Blairstown Diner with Ron Milky, Officer Dorf. Awesome. Um, so if he, everything, once everything, I mean, if nothing was happening right now with the current issues, he was looking for a November 13th release. So nice. um, I also have a link to that trailer on my page as well. It is awesome. 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 And going back to answer the question about where the film, where the next film should take off from? I'm gonna say part six, <coughs> and I say that because of I had Tom McLaughlin on here, and he has a script for part six, mm -hmm. and I just feel, why not? There's already something, you know what I mean? There's already something that's ready, pretty much. I mean, there's an, there's yeah. at the very least there's a, a idea set in stone, mm -hmm. and part six was such a great movie. A lot of people. It's another favorite of you know the, the franchise yeah. for a lot that of people. That was a stylistically amazing movie. Yeah. And on top yeah. of that, Fad, as you just said, you would love to see one in the snow. He actually had some ideas of it being in the snow. So, I say after part six. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I mean, because if you think about like the different endings to the various films, I mean, other than part six, there's really no. I mean, unless they wanted to do a sequel to. Part, you know, after part eight, seeing him get back to uh, from Crystal Lake or from Manhattan to Crystal Lake, we still want to see how he got there. <laughs> how he got what to Manhattan? Want to see how that boat <laughs> went from Crystal Lake? Well, some people <laughs> say that the lakes open up to the river, so okay, maybe that's how it happened. Um, I'm a visual learner, so I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like like probably like one of my. I like it better, definitely better than Jason X. And it's actually probably better than Freddy versus Jason too. So, um, but not one of the, I mean, it had a great, great trailer, teaser trailer. Yeah. Do you remember it? Like the skyline of New York. And I think Frank Sinatra singing and Jason's like on top of a building and a woman comes out thinking it's like her boyfriend or something. <laughs> and he turn, then he turns around, you know, like that was a great teaser trailer. Yeah. Fun movie though. Oh yeah, fun fun movie. <clears throat> they all are when it comes down to it. And they they really are. Like that's one thing. Like I I can watch this whole franchise from the very first one, <sighs> all the way up to I'll say Freddy vs Jason. This isn't including the fan films, and not even be bored with them. I can watch them all day. Well, yeah. I had my wife watch Jason X last week, and she's never seen it before, like from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And I just forgot, like, how bad the CG was, you know, <laughs> like, I think, like, I don't know, it's not one of my favorites. I like the way he looked in the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. when he had, yeah. like, Crystal Lake research, but I Some don't great know. kills in it. Oh, yeah. yeah, it had really good kills, but anytime you take a character in a space, it's, you know the franchise has <laughs> jumped a shark. Oh, you tried to make it the Matrix. I mean, I, <laughs> it then, was, like, yeah, it was... Even with was KM getting the upgrade, like that even was cheesy, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But, hey, they had to hold us over until Freddy versus Jason, which was another letdown. It should have been like a Nightmare on Elm Street featuring 
Jason Voorhees because, you know, <laughs> he didn't really have a big role until the end. And you made him afraid of water. <sighs> yeah, know? that didn't make sense to me. That, yeah. But that's that, what happens when you get a guy who's never seen any of the films direct. That's you know? bad. Yeah. That's like when yeah. people tell you they hated the Friday the 13th remake because Jason ran and Jason doesn't run. <laughs> So they obviously did not watch parts two, three, and four. Yeah, yeah. Did a hell of a lot of running. Yeah, sleep part four. Yeah, yep. and I mean, my biggest gripe with the remake was it wasn't serious enough, and they didn't base it like in the eighties. Those two things would have changed a lot for me if they made the movie a lot darker. Now I know every Friday the Thirteenth has its little comic relief character, a little bit of humor in between, but. That they whole had, movie it had too much humor. I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I went to go see mm-hmm. it back to back weekends, but it just had too much humor in it. They had your token characters in yes. it. Um, I mean, the beginning opening was great. You think you're watching a movie, and then after 15 minutes, it goes to the opening, you know, title. Um, the one thing, yeah, <laughs> when I watch it, the clay, his motorcycle is too small for him. I, I, every time I see that, I'm just like, it is too small for him. So <laughs> they bought it before he decided to bulk up. Yeah. Um, I, I saw it in theaters, and the one thing I remember is like when Jason's running and they have like that new score with him when he's running, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. My, my blood pressure was going up. Like he made me afraid of Jason again. Yeah. yeah. The first 15 minutes of that film was incredible. Are we doing yeah. Are we going to cover that one? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I won't talk too much about it, but I watched it recently. Oh, you can, you can yeah. still. We will be covering all the way up to uh, Friday vs. Jason. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. And that's uh, we'll get we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. I have not yeah. watched that in so long. I should pop that in. You know, now that you know, I had a lot of events coming up, but I had to can't you know, obviously cancel them. So my weekends are free, and I coach Special Olympics and. That's on hold right there. So, you know, yeah. I'm not used to having like, not that I have downtime, but I'm not used to having like, you know, I do this much. Yeah. All right. So, Friday part four, actually, it would be Sunday the 15th, I guess, right? <laughs> so, if we go with the timeline, um, that's what I liked about two, three, and four. They're like, uh, a trilogy in itself right there. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and I don't know, part four just, I think had the best storyline. Um, and you had characters that you liked, you know, uh, like I just, uh, dead I don't know. Fuck. I, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Dead fuck. Um, I just um, like you had, you had, you know, you didn't have one survivor. You had two, the brother and a sister. Um, and I, li- I like their relationship because you don't see that, like, that's not in real life. You know, I never seen a brother and sister have that great relationship. I didn't have that kind of relationship with my sister. I was getting on her nerves all the time. So, um, yeah, it starts off, picks up right after part three. And, uh, you know, the one thing I never noticed until I got it on Blu-ray or maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but when they put them in the, in like the ice box in the morgue or whatever you want to call it, and Axel shuts the, the lid, you mm-hmm. see his breath. Yep. You know, I never noticed that until I watched it on Blu-ray. Um, yep. You know, of course I saw him, you know, breathing under the towel. Um, but just uh that scene with like axel and his girlfriend the nurse and uh he's watching that exercise video and i'm not sure if you guys know it but darcy the moss who was in part six who played court's girlfriend she was one of the exercise girls oh i didn't know that yep very interesting and uh axel's uh death scene was trimmed down it was much gorier than what we saw mm-hmm. uh, i mean even with what we saw he twisted the neck around like 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 a 180 that guy was just great yeah. um and you know axel was also in police academy nice. nice yeah he uh was in part three that was um remember i think was it back in action was it part, no part two or part three he he was in two police academies, but 
Or maybe it was part one. I don't. I've been a while since I've seen them, but he had the crazy wife who, like, when he's driving to the police academy, she gets on the hood of the car and she's like in her bathrobe, not wanting him to go. Well, that that was him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, and then you know they, then we were introduced to our well, they're not campers, they're vacationers, I guess. You know. Yeah. Uh, on the weekend. Yeah. So we had the lovely Judy Aronson. Have you guys met her? No, I have yeah. not. She, um, yeah, uh, she, um, she hasn't come to any cons out my way, but for she is actually fifty six, and she still looks like she's aged very well. Like she has time, aged very time well. was good on her side. Um, yeah. And then you have um, the guy. Well, hold on, let me bring up their names. I was actually just watching Peter like, Barton. Peter Barton, yes. So when they're walking to the lake, he's wearing like the polo with the shorty gray short gym shorts. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I should try to pull that style off. <laughs> I don't know. I got another question about, um, cause you brought up the police Academy and somebody said, wasn't he the accidental prone guy in the police Academy? No, I know he's talking about um he looks like he could be his older brother. Um the accident prone guy, he had a he had a weird name. That guy ran in part 2. He owned the um like the chandelier store mm-hmm. in part 2. Um yeah, but I can see where he could kind of uh get them confused as they do look a lot like. Axel was in the first 3. Wait. Okay. He was in one, three, and six. Okay. What was six? Is that uh, the final mission? Under Siege. City Under Siege, Under yeah. Siege. Part three is Citizens on Patrol, I believe, and his wife became a cop in that one, I think. Uh, those are great movies, especially when they go to Blue, was it the Blue Oyster at the gay bar? <laughs> <laughs> that was in part four. Part four was the first one I saw as a child because it had Tony Hawk in it. And Mike McGill, all the skaters. I was a skater when I was a kid. Oh, and, and that was uh, Dana Carvey was a skater in that. Yeah. Um, who else was in that? David Spade was in it. And Oh, that's what I'm thinking of, David Karen Spade. Stone. Yeah. Karen Stone was in it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty basic instinct. Hmm. All right. Back to I'm thinking of That was the last movie. Gutenberg, too. Yeah, um, well, I think, well, he still looks good for his age, and uh, I, they've been talking about doing a uh, remake, reboot of the first one, so who knows who's coming back for the cameos. I mean, I mean, I would love to see, like, a Tackleberry of this day and age, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you can have, like, uh, LeBron James as Hightower. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yama, 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 yama. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the first Friday that also gave us twins. And uh, yeah. do you know what the twins were big for before Friday? Weren't they the, the double mint twins? There you go. Yes, they were. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. I remember when Bubblegums had commercials. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> double mint fun. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and... Um, uh, what what was Crispin Glover? I just watched it. I can't remember his his uh, name. And in the movie? Yeah. Jimmy. 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 Yeah, Dead he, fuck. Got, he got Dead lucky fuck. with uh, one of them. I'm not yes, sure he which did. one. Um, and poor Ted, all he wanted was just a girl. You know? And he ends up <laughs> that watching. Guy, that guy we deserved, though. <laughs> yeah, he was a jerk. You know? Well, I guess you could have your, your token characters in this one you know you had oh, yeah butt, you had the you had the prude or the, the good girl next door you had <clears> the shock <throat> you had the nerd you had the bully and then the twins so the uh, twins with the worst outfits ever <laughs> oh man well you know it's funny speaking of twins so um there's a girl i know who does cosplay and she does like uh different types like she'll do like dc and um video game characters and I had asked her a while ago if she wanted to do a cross play of um, she does the girl from the last of us and I said how cool would that be because the sequel's coming out uh, I guess May for the video game and actually Naughty Dog 
like she tagged Naughty Dog in one of her photos and they they reposted it on Instagram. So that's what I'm oh. trying to do is like, you know, do something like that. But she's got a twin sister. I oh. didn't I, I didn't know this. So I was like, oh, I wonder if we can get some cheesy white pants and like a pink and blue top and recreate the scene. <laughs> Completely cover up their body, you know, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, what was your favorite death in the film? Well, first of all, before I answer that question, I'm going to say my favorite dance of all time is Crispin Glover getting oh, yeah. down in the cabin. <laughs> well, so I, 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 I love the fact that that was improv. That was like something he was apparently doing at the nightclubs. Like, <laughs> that was well, all. From what I, I read somewhere, I don't know if it was in the Crystal Lake documentary or just trivia somewhere. Actually, he was dancing, and if you think about it, um, to um, Back in Black, I think. But by ACDC, uh, but yeah. I think they couldn't get the rights, so they threw in the song by uh, Lion. I think their name is, and actually, it's not a bad song if you, if you find it on yeah, YouTube, you know. But uh, I was like, wow, I have nothing to be feel embarrassed about, you know. But Christian <laughs> Glover is just an odd character in general. He is, <laughs> yes, you know. Um, I was reading that. Uh, he like would go to a toy store or he found a toy store where they were shooting and bought all these toys and bought like a really expensive sailboat. And I think it was like remote control. And so he's <laughs> sailing it out in a lake where they were skinny dipping and like broken and sunk. Uh, but he's just an odd duck. Like if you want something autograph from him, he like talks about his other stuff and like, not like what you're there to see him for. Um, I would love uh, to meet him though. I would love to meet him because he's just, uh, he's very eccentric, <clears throat> you know, like yeah. it's George McFly. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I know he's had so many great roles. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if you ever go on YouTube, type up um, Crispin Glover, David Letterman, if you've never seen that, mm. um, it was, I've like, seen that. Yeah. It's just like how Joaquin Phoenix was. <laughs> You know, when he was on the <laughs> show, but Chris Glover was doing it for real. And like to the point where he yeah. took off. Yeah. So, but uh, like, I think like the last role I remember seeing him in was Charlie Angels 2, where he's like smelling the hair. He's like the hit man and he's smelling the hair. Uh, and then he was in Willard, the remake of Willard. Willard. Yeah. Which was like a remake of Ben, I think it was called, or maybe it was Willard. I'm not sure, but. Very weird, interesting. He was in a remake of Wizard of Gore, too. Okay, I haven't seen that one. I'll have to check yeah. it out. Yeah. I'm um, trying to think of my favorite kill from this one. Hey, and listeners, this goes for you guys. So, what was your favorite kills? And again, don't be scared to call in. Hit that little button up top, call in. You can chat with us. I'll I tell think- you what kill I hated was the hitchhiker. Really? The banana. Yeah. Why'd you hate it? No, to this day, I can't watch that scene. Really? But remember it vividly. This was the first Friday the 13th that I saw like, okay. unrated. Okay. Three was the first one I... I Were you eating a banana when it happened? <laughs> no, but I loved bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Banana coming out of her mouth, just sick. Yeah. And it oh. stuck with me that I, every time, as soon as I see that knife go, I turn away. Like every time. But I remember exactly... Like. <laughs> Poor girl, all she wanted was a ride to Canada. No, I felt bad for it. Too. I was like, she didn't do anything. No. Um, I, I think yeah, my be- least favorite death scene is when Rob gets killed. Because he's like, oh my God, he's killing me. He's killing me. Like, that's my least favorite one. You know, and that's the director. That's Joseph Zeno's favorite. Ugh. Really? Yeah. He said because it, it, it took away from the. From any gag and made it more of just like a kind of a realistic. They wanted you to feel emotional and okay. bad. I don't think we got to know him well enough, other than just being a normal person with a Sandra's, to yeah. want people to die. Like, I don't think we got to know him well enough to be like, oh no, you know? They, yeah, no, you, you didn't. And I mean, we knew the other characters better. Yeah, and I mean, he's Sandra's older brother, and he must have been like a Jason fanatic to have all the clippings. It wasn't like he just got this <laughs> yeah. overnight, because literally his sister died a couple of days before he showed up. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, you, you the fans were shocked because you thought he was going to be like one of the heroes, and they gave him a very unheroic death. At least Paul, as a, no, not Paul. Um, gosh, ooh, Paul got it bad. Yeah, um, <laughs> that one hurts still. Yeah, right in the crotch. <laughs> that that one right there was as far as being a man and know how bad that would hurt. My least favorite. That's the okay. I'll put it this way. That's the that's the last like last way I'd want to go out. Don't, if you're gonna yeah. kill me, just kill me. Make it quick. Not there though. <laughs> and that was there. a long. That was a long scene. It yeah. was. Yeah, and I mean, and it wasn't just like long. he poked him. He also shot him too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Ooh. I think my favorite kill is probably Jimmy with the corkscrew, and then he got the meat cleaver in the forehead. Yeah. That one is good. He got he got double. Um, oh, Axel's is really good too. Yeah, Axel's. Yeah, we. Yeah, Axel's is good with the the head the twist. twist. Yeah. Um, oh, that might be right. Hmm. That's a good one. There's so many good kills. Like even the one where the girl gets killed in the raft from the bottom. Stabs yeah. Yeah. The raft. And actually, uh, well, and so, Doug in the shower with the. Oh uh, yeah. Face so crushed. Ted yes. Blake, he um. You know, his name is not in the credits at all because he was just so, like, just mortified at, like, just how the movie was. And he didn't want to be associated with it. And then, you know, he saw how well uh, the movie turned out. And I think he was offered future roles, but he had turned it down because he didn't want anything to do with it. Because I think they offered him the next couple of sequels. And wow. he said no. But he was a advocate for the, the actors, except for Corey Feldman. Um so, like, the scene where um, Paul and his girl get killed, that was shot in October and it was very cold. And Judy Aronson was kept saying to Justice Zito, like, I, I can't stay in this water anymore. Oh, sorry. Um, uh -oh. So she, like, got hypothermia, actually, or close to right. it. And Ted White had said to him, you know, if you don't get her out of here, I'm walking off. Um, Quentin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think there was another actor that he stood up, Peter Barton, because um, Peter's head was hurting from being mushed into the shower wall, and Ted wanted him to have like uh, a cushion back there, and Joseph said no. Um, and then Corey Feldman didn't like him, so like when he's hacking Jason, he's hitting sandbags, but he named the sandbags like Joseph Zito. Yeah, Ted White said that he was an ill-mannered, mean little kid. Yes, yes. I'm sure he's a little Hollywood brat. I mean, spoiled rotten. Oh, Sorry, called me. Yeah, yeah. He's still, man. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, my, my I, brother cannot stand him. Oh, I, you know what? Real quick, this Axel kill, because I, I just went to YouTube and looked up the kills for this. Awesome freaking kill. He uses a saw first to cut his neck and mm -hmm. then twist his head backwards. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um... I actually found Corey's tell-all documentary that was out on the six. You can find it on YouTube, like the whole thing. I didn't really? finish. Wa oh, yeah, I didn't finish watching it. Um, but it's no news. Like we already knew who the abusers were. I'm thinking he's gonna like name like a big, powerful Hollywood mogul, like Steven Spielberg, for example. No. Yeah, yeah. It was Charlie Sheen. Like, we already knew that, and we heard that, because the guy who played Joey in Part 5, um, his name's Dominic, I forget his last name, um, he was also rumored to be one of the abusers as well, and right before he died, he said Charlie Sheen was one of the, mm -hmm. you know, the guys. But, um, you know, it's been real quiet. Like, you'd have, you haven't heard anything from the Charlie camp, but with the streaming service that they used it like crashed so if you paid however much money it was to watch this you didn't get to watch it that's so ridiculous it didn't um turn out the way he thought it would be and of course you know he's a very interesting character i read his i found his choreography for like two dollars at a used bookstore so of course i picked it up um but it's all about the money for him oh yeah. you know like, you knew all these names, supposedly, but give me money so I can tell you who it is. It's like almost like blackmail in a way, mm -hmm. you know? And I, mean, I know a, a guy that books um, 
national acts that come through here. And he, at one point, was going to book Corey's band. <laughs> the Angels. He contacted us to be an opener. And <laughs> he's laying down the road. He said, no. He said, I'm not dealing with his shit and demands anymore. <laughs> yeah, he didn't tell me what they were, but he was pissed, man. And yeah. One of the most yeah. chill dudes I've ever known. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no. But I've you know, heard other people say recently that it will charge you extra, like quite a bit extra, um, if you want an autograph that isn't personalized because he's afraid you're going to sell it. And if you're going to sell it, he <laughs> wants to cut. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm on like so many Friday mm-hmm. groups and some guy, like when Corey did a, a con maybe last year, Corey like signed his name wrong. Like Corey signed his own name wrong. Like, it just looked really bad. And the guy, it was not just a single autograph. The guy had a poster with other Friday alum. Oh, man. You know? Yeah. So, and he was very pissed off. But, you know. We got yeah. another, uh, <clears throat> this one's a not a question, but a comment. Favorite kill would be Jimmy. Corkscrew. Through yeah. the hand. He's <laughs> yelling. Cleaver. And then remember when he, the, yeah, then the cleaver to the face. And then remember when Jason hangs him in the doorway? Yeah, and, and then he peels him down. Yeah, uh, that good. was awesome. And I've I know I've mentioned this before. I want to hear your guys' favorite kills. My le- oh my least favorite kill is when Jason dies at the end. That broke my heart. <laughs> Hated it. it that's so cool, that's though. also a reason why. Even he as a kid, die. I didn't like Tommy Jarvis' character in this movie because of that. So I don't like Corey Feldman because of that. That's my reasoning. <laughs> and hey, if that's a bad reason, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, one thing I love that Jason does in these movies, throwing people through windows. Mm-hmm. I knew you were going to – I watched it last night, and I was like, this is Sturdy's favorite part right here. It's one of my favorite – I don't know what it is that I love so much about it, but it's like one of my favorite freaking things he does is throwing them through windows. It's just, I feel like it should happen in every single Friday the 13th movie that he's in. It should just He should just throw somebody through a window. Well, if they, he busts if, through the door, too, which is great. When that's awesome. Busted, remember that turn yeah. that Ed White did was just iconic Jason right there. Like, 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 if, if they make another movie, Paramount, New Line, whoever, make sure Jason throws somebody through a window. I don't care if he's throwing them into a cabin or out of a cabin. He just has to throw them through a window. Um. Like when he crashed through the window to get Corey, like that reaction from him was great, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then when he busts through the door and just like had the hammer and just like threw it, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man, like that scene was just that just that whole that's that that last like twenty minutes is probably my favorite of the movie where he's just in the Jarvis house and they go back to the house across the way, which I don't know why she did. And then Gordon, I didn't understand like. Was he like, he must have been scared and just jumped out the window. Slow like, motion jump. Yeah, and you never know what you, they don't like. Like Muffin, what happened to Gordon? You know? yeah. <laughs> um. So, in I remember watching it on basic TV. Um, guess I had talked about this on another episode. Um, probably even this one too. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a TV station out of New York, WPIX, that would play horror movies in October, and mm-hmm. I remember in the final chapter when after um paul is killed and then rob's going to investigate and then he he sees jason walking away from his tent there was a deleted scene which i don't know if it's on the dvds at all i should pull it up because i have the thing up right now but inside rob's tent he had like little radar portable like radar machines like a little box with um like the uh faa radar thing going bloop and actually i'm gonna pull it up now i gotta find my remote and see if it's on there i just remember that from watching on tv but in the the dvd versions it doesn't have it on there that was one of those added scenes to yeah to to, to to, for for time you know or to take out the boobies or something so another great quill scene the torso the nurse oh yeah, yeah 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 this guy's just well Speaking of that, like, yeah, he just took a little scalpel and, whoosh, but <laughs> did anyone watch Walking Dead this past, was it this past weekend? Or, we, or anyone watch Walking Dead? No, I've stopped no, since like season more. three or four. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, let me tell you. All right, how about Sons of Anarchy? Has anyone watched Sons of Anarchy? Yes. I did watch okay. that. So, remember the character Opie? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So his char- he's this is his second season in it, and his character. Um, you basically you have this group called the Whisperers, and they're they're like a clan, and they wear the zombie skin, and they walk within the zombies. So his character is called Beta, so he's the second in command to Alpha, and like he just reminds me so much of um, Derek Mears in um, uh. Friday Thirteenth. But there's, I forget if it was like this past Sunday or Sunday before, he's got like this big old knife, like a Rambo knife, and he stabs the girl, and he's like, he says something to her, but then she like pisses him off with whatever she said back, and he just sliced her all the way up, you know? Like, he does a great job, and I bet like if you follow any like cosplay groups or anything, you're going to see this alpha um, or this beta uh, cosplayer frenzy probably because his character his look is really cool <laughs> nice nice yeah i thought the nurse in the beginning was really uh overreacted <laughs> quite harshly <laughs> wait with the torso i mean she just st- yeah well i mean no 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 before that with the with the hand landing on oh, her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's just like screaming for the next three minutes. <laughs> like, oh you you're telling me that if you were making out with Axel and a dead man's hand touched you, you wouldn't freak out? Well, first Maybe of all at the moment, but she's hey, still yelling at him in the hall. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait a minute. That question right there. If I'm making out with Axel, that right there I'm freaking I'm having some issues. Now <laughs> no disrespect. You know, none of that to whoever is into that stuff and who does that, but that's just not how I roll. That's not what I do. So if I'm doing You're something like that, <laughs> that's going to be my issue right there before the hand even drops. <laughs> but I get what you're saying, though. She did she did kind of drag it a little bit. She could have relaxed. Um, oh so God. the only <laughs> deleted scene that they have on this DVD, and I had the Blu-ray, is um, the the lost ending, the alternate ending. So, yeah. have you seen the alternate ending? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, rather, rather than um, it end in the hospital, it's um, Trish goes into the bathroom, and the mom is in the tub, like, dead. Like, uh, yeah. you know, he either drowned her or just ran the water for her. But then, like, I think her eyes open, and then I think she comes up behind Trish. I mean, let me play it real quick. Um, actually, no, there are slash scenes. I was wrong. They just got to name them different. You can't say, do you have that, the eight disc set? I wish I bought that one. Um, like you're talking about the the one with the cool cover, like the tin cover. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get that when it came out. I wish I did. I just got the re-release of like when they put the DVDs out and that horrible, ugly packaging, but they, put it in blu-ray a couple years ago like the artwork is just so horrible with it but i someone shared on a discord thing that i'm on um that they're releasing parts two through x i think or maybe two through freddy versus jason and a blue another blu-ray set um really yeah but um actually i reserved um the 40th anniversary steel box for Friday the 13th. That's coming out in May for like 13.99 or 14.99 on Blu-ray. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to work next check. Yeah. Gonna have to get that. I know. Yeah. I, I know I did see it. I just didn't know it was that cheap. But oh I, yeah. I do want to get that. And then I, I want to get, I want to get the whole, the whole franchise on Blu-ray. Well, yeah. Like you, the out of print one, it goes for like three hundred dollars. Oh yeah, hour. that one. I'm the same as you, Brent Brian. I'm sure you're kicking yourself as much as I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I believe when it first came out, it was like eighty dollars. Oh I yeah. Like, I kept holding off, holding off, holding off. Gone. Yeah. Hundred twenty, hundred thirty. Now it's like three hundred plus, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Man? You know better than this. Well, I got <laughs> lucky because um, if you ever like search the novels like on eBay to see how much they're selling for, they go for a couple hundred dollars. Um, I got lucky. I found a Jason Lives one oh. for thirty, um, and that can go for like eighty. Um, the cover was a little beat up, but I don't care. I just wanted to mm-hmm. own it, you know. Um, like there's two versions of the Part Three novel that are out. Um, the one that I'll have to send you like the pictures, but the mm-hmm. one that has 
like a blue background with a different hockey mask, more of like a part five hockey mask. That is the novel based off of the screenplay. So it's oh. different than the other one. Mm. And that fetches like that goes for about a hundred dollars, but the original novel, you know, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks, but this guy in one of my Friday groups, I don't know how he did it, but he got parts one and two. He didn't tell me how much, but it was nowhere near what one would cost on its own. Yeah. So, and when I go to the thrift stores, I'm always in the book section looking for yeah. them, you know, <laughs> you never know. No, nah, no. Nah. Um, so yeah. Um, we talked about the kills and, uh, what did you guys think of Corey of, uh, Corey's, uh, his haircut when he cut his haircut bald, when he got his hair bald. <laughs> Oh god! I mean, he's a pretty darn quick uh, barber. I tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a lot of hair to cut and then to shave. Trish was down there fighting him that whole time. <laughs> he, he hadn't even started cutting yet when they came through the door. Yeah, yeah. I noticed um, that more last night for some reason. I was watching and I'm like, wait, okay, she left the house to get him to go. Mm -hmm. He's reading all these papers while she's over there, not leaving. She right. Could back over and he decides he's going to start cutting his hair. Yeah, yeah. It's like... <laughs> well, if you remember... the to Trish, she's pretty strong. In the beginning of the movie, the mom wanted him to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. so, he did. Yeah. He did he it. He needed it because he looked stupid. He looked even dumber after well, the Well, that was the look of the kids in 1984. <laughs> <Silly bowl>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying it because it's Corey Feldman. <laughs> now, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know if I'm the only one and probably because I do like the Tommy Jarvis storyline, I always said, and it probably can't be done now, maybe like when he was a little older, if they made another installment to have the true Tommy Jarvis. Corey? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I As much as I don't like him, I do agree. Like, I feel it would have been cool if he was in all the other ones that Tommy Jarvis was in, even if they waited a few years so he got a little bit older. Yeah, you know, even if you say like seventeen, eighteen, because then they can dying make them look in one again. <laughs> huh? He's dying to be in one again. Oh, he's gosh, dying yeah. to be in anything now. Probably. Every <laughs> interview I've seen him in, he's been like, "I have this great idea." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, My character, like, yeah. Well, they, he's going to be in Thirteen Fanboy. I'm sure you're familiar with that, right? I yes. am. <sighs> He's going to be in that? Oh, yeah. He doesn't ruin it. They got he a lot it? of, he is in it. Yeah. He doesn't play himself. Um, and I don't know how big of a role he has in it, but, uh, he's got a lot Poor of, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of, uh, Oh, she even ha celebrated his birthday for him on his set. Like got him a cake and everything. Oh, and, okay. You know, he comes in. That was probably in his contract. <laughs> <laughs> Plus buy me cake and ice cream. <laughs> well, speaking of like 13 fanboy, like, did you see the John Travolta film, the fin the fan or the fanatic? Yes. Uh, what did you Fred think of Durst. it? Man, it took me a minute to watch it because Fred Durst directed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody was talking about it, and, and a buddy of mine, David, shout out to David, was like, this is a ridiculous film, but I just – I. I loved it. <laughs> had a great time with it. And so I watched it. And it honestly, at first I thought this is ridiculous. And then I was like, actually, yeah. I mean, for what it was, you um, know, like it made me feel bad for Travolta's character. Yeah. He didn't know any better, but the whole time I'm watching it, you know, who he reminded me of, uh, in Tropic Thunder where they have like the Ben <laughs> Stiller trailers and in the uh -huh. beginning, he plays, I forget what the character's name was, but he, you know, had special needs. That's what his character reminded me of the whole, <laughs> the whole movie. Um, but uh, he channeled I, I, his inner Ben for that role. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, I watched it on my fire stick and it didn't cost me a dime. So, mm -hmm. like, you know. It really, I mean, it, it, oh, it was Fred Durst. But again, I, you know, I wanted to hate it, but... It, Nothing groundbreaking or anything, but I thought it overall, I thought John Travolta and, and Devin Sawa did a, did a fine job. I mean, Devin Sawa was far better than John Travolta, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and that was kind of a different role for him. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Devin, I mean, yeah. Um, it, John Travolta's doing the whole Nicolas Cage and Bruce Willis. I'll make a movie for a page. Yeah. 
Yeah. You, yeah. you just had to say that, that filthy name, didn't you, Brian? <laughs> For Nick Cage? Yeah. Uh, I thought of you the other night, Sir Sturdy. I watched uh, Color Out of Space. Everyone's I- saying it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that and Mandy, and then he did like another one. They're saying like those. Mandy is good too. You're that's missing cool. some good ones. <laughs> yeah, I got a. That's on my queue. I, I watched Mandy. Not a fan. No. And I just, I did say nice things about Nicholas Cage. Though I said he had a cool shirt on. <laughs> and like some of the action scenes, like with the um the big chainsaw or whatever it was, that was kind of cool. But other than that. Do you know who the, who the director of uh, Mandy? Do you know who his father was? Nicholas Cage. Nope. It was uh, George P. Cosmatos who did Cobra and Rambo, mm. First Blood Part Two, and uh, oh, what else did he do? He did another. He did some big action films back in the day, but his son is the one who did Mandy, and he also did a song called, or. A, film called beyond the black rainbow which is another kind of trippy sci-fi type thing kind of like mandy mm-hmm. but very good so you don't like nicholas yeah, cage at all like, like me like yeah like the rock face off con air raging arizona okay <clears throat> leaving Las yeah, Vegas. Where did the hatred begin um recently actually because the only movies I remember seeing him in was Face Off and Gone in 60 Seconds, which I did enjoy Face Off, but I seen that years ago. I seen Gone in 60 Seconds, but it had beautiful women and beautiful cars in it, so it had nothing to do with him being a, at least an entertaining movie at the time. I haven't seen yeah. those movies since I've watched them the one time. Timothy Oliphant was cool in it. And then I just mm-hmm. seen him in like a bunch of stuff online, just like his movie clips and stuff, and just I just don't Liquor like him. Man. I don't like him at all. I seen Mandy and it made me not like him even more. I just, he's too over the top. <coughs> Excuse me. Did I feel like Wicker Man, the remake. Oh, mm-mm. <laughs> so horrible. Thank you. Somebody in the chat right here. I c- can you please, please the wh- you just said the beautiful words. Can't stand Nicholas Cage. Can you please call in like right now, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't no, yeah. think we're arguing with you. I mean, I, I don't. Oh, no, no, no. I know. I, <laughs> Watch Wicker Man. That's kind of where I I noticed that was painful in here. <laughs> All right, I got a question for you two before we jump back into this amazing movie without Nicholas Cage. What is one? A- who is one actor you cannot stand? Like you just watch the movie, even if it's a movie you love, or like say it, say there's a new horror movie coming out, and you know they're going to be in it, but you're like, I got to watch it because it's horror, but I don't want to watch it because he or she is in it. Hmm. I can't stand Channing Tatum. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I don't. He was on Howard Stern. Oh, I, I say that sometimes, and my girlfriends are all like, hey, that's just because he's, you know, no, no. There's plenty of good looking guys. You know, I would also have to say Vin Diesel. You see that? I, I agree with you with that because, like, <clears throat> I mean, as a guy, yeah, we'll, we will watch stuff because of an attractive female here and there, usually porn, but. <clears throat> <laughs> But no, what I'm getting at is it's like we'll we'll watch a movie, right? It, it could be a movie we like, and it could be a good movie. Or no, sorry, it could be a movie we hate. There could be a check the female in it, and we could say, yeah, that movie sucked. She looked good. That movie sucked. But I feel like females are completely different. Like, oh, this movie was so good. This so and so is in it. I'm like, the movie was horrible. The guy just had his shirt off, and you love that guy, so it's a good movie because of that. No, yeah. the movie sucked. He can't act. Yeah, because you think about it. To Chan, Channing Tatum really he's done a lot but when you ask about Channing Tatum his history they're, they're going to bring up Magic Mike 1 and 2 and then step up you know um, but Vin Diesel for me that will be another Channing Tatum because he is really stuck with his Fast and Furious franchise he will melt that for every penny he can get triple X but when he does like standalone films, like the the what was it Last Witch Hunter or Pacifier, even Pacifier or even <laughs> Bloodshot, such a great comic character. And I I talked to one person so far about it, and he said it was horrible. Um, he does always play the same character. He does. Like the only film I really thought there's two films I liked him in. Other than you know, I don't. The first Fast and Furious I liked. 
but then it just got ridiculous after that. And now they're like international spy MI five or whatever. Doing, you know, it's just even like I was so excited for Hobbs and Shaw, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Um, Saving Private Ryan, I liked him in Saving Private Ryan. And I like them in Knock Around Guys. Have you ever seen that one? Yeah. That's a, that was a good one. But he makes crap movies now. You know, if it's not Fast and the Furious, it's not going to sell. Yeah. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Time out. Time out. Somebody said Mark Wahlberg, Vin Diesel, and Will Smith. Vin Mark Diesel, I get. The other Mark two? Mark Wahlberg? I don't get it. Well, Will Smith, he doesn't have the same power he used to have. I don't I like didn't... Will Smith, like him. <laughs> like He's his, too cocky. His attitude, but yes. I, I can't. He is a good actor. At least, I, I at least I've seen him play different characters. I mean, yes, he, he's done it all. He's done a million times, but I've yeah. seen him in roles where, like, the Pursuit of Happiness. That was a great cool. film. Yeah, I mean, um, con- was it Concussion where he played like the doctor? With the brain injury, I think that was. I haven't good. seen that. That was a good one. I did not like the one with him and his son. Um, the Karate Kid. Uh, n- well, that was uh, no. The one where him and his son took like a science fiction movie, um, Earth. Oh, uh, I didn't watch that. Oh. It was on Netflix, right? <laughs> no, it had a theatrical release. This is going back like maybe like five, six years. I think M. Night Shyamalan and directed it. Shyamalan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was more of a, he was a secondary character. Jaden was like the first character and it was just God awful. Um, and I don't like his son either. Jaden Smith. Like, I've heard, I've heard he's one of the most difficult people to work with. Jayden. Oh God. He's your typical Hollywood superstars child, you know? Yeah. Um, the one that's on Netflix, Bright, Bright, I think it's called, where he plays a cop with like the ogre oh, or whatever. Yeah. I, know I didn't. I, I fell asleep, but some people said it was good. I mean, they're making a sequel. Uh, I didn't see the new Bad Boys yet. Um, I didn't either. Uh, I like older Will Smith, like the '90s, early 2000s, and then he just got cocky. Um, his whole family is just weird. Him and Jada. Jada. I can't, I can't stand her either. See, and I love them all. Especially yeah. Will's like one of my favorite actors. But just, yeah. I think it's because he's so, you know what it is about him that I like a lot? And I'll say this, and then we can get back into part four, which I'm watching this <laughs> oh, cool yeah. YouTube thing on part four. I have to try to remember this link shared in the group. But um, as you guys are saying, like his versatility, because he went from, if you go think back from The Fresh Prince, and we can yeah. just jump up to, to The Pursuit of Happiness, completely different roles. You got one where he's just like, you know, young, goofy, teenager getting in the typical goofy teenager and then the one the pursuit of happiness is just like all your emotions are just turned on and changed like whoa yeah Yeah. amazing um i mean he was horrible horrible as dead shot i didn't even watch that uh it 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 basically was like a will smith movie as soon as they casted him i'm like oh it's not going to be about a team it's going to be about one person now and you know what i don't you know what it is with the dc with those type of movies and i'll say this actually goes in with horror with me too i don't like big name actors in those movies like Mm -hmm. if they already have a let me rephrase that if they already have a big star if they already have a big name if they're already a superstar I'm not a big fan of them being in those movies. Now it's different if they started in that movie and then, you know, they blew up later on in their career. Right. Yeah. Or if you know, like Jamie Lee Curtis, we know her. I mean, she's in a lot of movies. We mainly know her from Halloween. I'm cool with that. I wouldn't say she's on the level of like, you know, the other people we just mentioned, but I'm saying like, I don't like it when say Will Smith, for example, say if he was in like Halloween or something, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work for me. I like it when you have like yeah. the, the lower name actors, the lesser name actors, or the B actors, the no name actors, to where not only do they get their shine, but it's like if you're watching the movie for the first time, you don't know who's going to survive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Once you have certain big name actors in there, you're like, all right, well, I already know he's not going to die. I know she's not going to die. <laughs> you can even pretend that they're going to die in the end of the movie, but you know they're not going to. Perfect, exa- perfect example was the guy from um, the Friday the 13th remake. I can't think of his name. Oh, what the hell is his name? The main guy from Supernatural? Yes, the show. Chad Padalecki. 
There you go. I knew he was going to survive. I was like, okay, there's no way they're going to kill this guy. But they threw us a <laughs> twist with the final girl when they killed Danielle Pennebecker. True. Yeah. She I didn't know who she A lot. I, I don't think a lot of people knew who she was, though, compared to him. Right. She gets killed a lot. I mean, she was in uh, the Crazies remake. Oh, was she? I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. Is she got killed in that one. And then, uh, well, I guess in Mr. Brooks. Did you guys see Mr. Brooks? Yeah, mm-hmm. a while ago. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen that one, one too. But, but yeah, you thought she was going to get away, but then you remembered, oh, wait, that's there's a sister here. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. 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 And yeah, she's, she's actually going to be. That was kind of weird, too. The sister? But, yeah, because Jason wait, doesn't kidnap. That's Jason probably doesn't the most kidnap people. argument I've heard about that movie. I can discount the whole running thing, but, you know, or. But. It is kind of weird that he held her hostage. Well, because she looked like his mom, and that's, you know, if you yeah. think about it, like, Ginny... Tr- his mom looked good. <laughs> Nana Visitor was his mom. So, um, well, speaking of yeah, his it was mom, part four was the first time we learned Mrs. Voorhees' first name when they drove by the... That's house. right, on the tombstone. Yep. the yep. Voorhees. Yep. So, and Pamela that's, like, where the timeline also is a little finagly because the film, the movie, the original one was filmed in 79, but it takes, you know, it takes place in 1980 on a tombstone. They have her dying in 79. So, you know, I remember Betsy Palmer in an interview saying, I think it was on the crystal Lake memories. She was saying, yeah, (laughs) part four came out and I found out that my character had a last name. (laughs) Yeah. That's where it started. See, that's what's great about these each story did add something, you know, part three, we got the hockey mask, part four. Yes. Four, he, he, this. That hockey mask is so iconic. Like, it's just, oh, hang on. They're about to, yes, thrown through a window. Boom. I had to see it. But the hockey mask, <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this. I got to post this on, I got to post this YouTube thing on the, in the group because it's just, it's showing like the kills and like kind of how they did them in a sense and like certain, certain scenes they did. And the window scene, I just happened to look over, and that's what they were doing. You know, like that dog, dog is like, squirrel, you know? Squirrel! He's like, oh, window! <laughs> yes. <Stop. laughs> now, hanging up, what's his face? Ah. Uh, oh, man, it's... This was such a good freaking movie. This was such a good franchise and a good movie. Again, with every franchise, with every horror franchise, they go up and down, up and down. But... <sighs> I feel the bi- I'll say the big three, Freddie, Jason, Michael. For the most part, I can watch from one to the last one. I would say with Fr- I would say Friday the Thirteenth, I can watch every single one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know the series too well. I'd have to I have to go back and rewatch it again. After part three is like kind of when I gave up on Nightmare on Elm Street. But uh, Halloween, I think the only one I don't think I can. Or no, two. I can't watch is uh, Resurrection. Okay. Thank you. And part two, not the original part two, part two of the remake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I see, I, I, I see your face. Like, what the hell is he talking about? Part two. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Lance just said Jason Takes Manhattan is his absolute favorite. He really didn't say that, but that's what I'm putting out there, people. <laughs> if, that, if, if that's Lance Wagner, no. <laughs> and, and he likes most everything <laughs> so when he says part eight i have to agree though that's my least favorite of the series part eight it, it is late out of all of them part eight your least favorite like yes. not even really, Jason X. really wow yeah. my least favorite for i did a countdown which i wanted which matter of fact when we're done with this whole series <laughs> review that we're doing i want to do a countdown with you guys I did one, but I want to do a revised one for myself, and I want you okay. guys to be part of this. Ooh, okay. But um, my f- my least favorite was uh, Jason Goes to Hell. It's followed because, by I think Jason X. Is it because he's not like Jason until like the last fifteen minutes of the movie? Yeah, it was just I didn't like the whole transferring through bodies and all that, and the sister killing him with that special dagger. It just yeah, it bugged me. You know, well, Adam Marcus, he's making. He's currently making a documentary about filming, and um, 
He's actually a cool guy because you know we're friends yeah, in baseball. Yeah, he is. Uh, he helped me make this. Uh, he did. He did a. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it, but on my Jason page, I did a happy birthday video for a young boy with autism, and um, you know he he recorded something for me, and I'm w- did not expect for him to do what he did. He as he was filming his documentary, he had the cast and crew saying happy birthday to the young boy. You know, it was really cool, but. Um, he had like one of his perks on the, the Kickstarter or, or Indiegogo was to ask him anything and it could be anything, you know? And I, I had said to him, you know, I'm, I, you know, I can't, I guess it was like a hundred or 200 hour perk or something like that. And I'm like, I can't afford it. But I hope someone asks you, what is the connection between Jason and Creighton Duke? Cause that was like the million dollar question. Yeah. <clears throat> Craig Dick was an awesome character. He was. We didn't get enough of him. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Williams was awesome for that role. And in my mind, I always say it's Reggie Directless. <laughs> he just changed his name. <laughs> Speaking of, Sturdy, you have that suit worked out yet? As a matter of fact, I do. Yes. I, um, <laughs> actually, Brian sent me a button. Yeah. But uh, I, I believe there's pictures on my Facebook. I had the the red sweatpants and the red zipper hoodie. Oh, I, I did see. it at the last con and I, back in October. I should have tagged you guys. In. I'll look it yeah. up and I'll send it to you guys. That's, As a matter of fact, here's what I'm going to so do. Awesome. When we do part five, which is next, I'm going to wear the, I'm going to wear the hoodie and the, um, the sweats. I actually right. met a guy that, um, he was actually on my last, like two no, two weeks ago, I, I had him on my Confessions of a Cosplayer. His favorite movie is Part 5. And he is a Roy fanatic. And I actually met him in Boy. Boytown this past weekend. And when he's in character, he's in character. He doesn't talk to you or anything. He's got the traditional Roy costume. Mm-hmm. But then he um, also did like a ghost Roy from like Never Hike Alone. So he kind of nice. has like a Never Hike Alone Roy mask. And he has new coveralls and stuff. Like he did it all himself. It looks really good. That's um, awesome. We watched part five this past Friday the thirteenth. We I was trying to go through them and figure out which one my wife hadn't seen, and uh, she didn't recall part five. And so we put that in. She actually made it through the entire thing, but she kept saying they're like, "Why do they keep showing that paramedic?" <laughs> like because the time you know now that once you knew who he yeah. was. They show him a lot. They show close-ups of his face. Yeah, I knew there was something. Well, as soon as he like covers Joey up and they do a close-up of his eyes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's always like, there's always like, he's always watching. And but, but then again, he's another person just, where like, was he a Jason fanatic or did he quickly research Jason in one night or the same day <laughs> because the killing started the right after day. Joey died? He's um, like, oh, I'll just blame this Tommy guy. Yeah, it, it could have been one of those things where everybody just knew who he was. You know what I mean? Like everybody, yeah. knew who, everybody knew about the killer. Everybody knew about the mask. So just like, hey, let me just. Favorite, copy. I think favorite. it was the damn enchiladas. That's what I think it was. <laughs> bad favorite, for everybody. Favorite character out of that movie or characters is um, Ethel and Junior. You yeah. know, <laughs> nice. Would you shut the fuck up? Oh man, he was. <laughs> that's another guy, Ron Sloan. Such a cool guy. I uh, reached out to him on Facebook. And said, hey, Ron, you know, I'm doing this thing for this kid. If you have time, can you, like, send a quick 10-second video of happy birthday? He had just got back done from filming 13 Fanboy. <laughs> Within two hours, I had Ron Sloan, like, in a, a black backdrop, leather jacket, and probably talked for, like, 30 seconds, you know? It was really yeah. cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. They were great in that movie. So oh good. yeah, and Ethel looks great. Like they aged her up for the film. Um, mm-hmm. She's probably in her seventies now, but she's still yeah. cute. You know, she looks really good. They both look good. You know, so apart from they were really they, good. I mean, they had like off the wall roles in that, but they were. I mean, they did it well. You could tell they had chops. You know. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it was convincing. Yeah, yeah. Even the girl doing the robot. You know, so. 
I, yeah, I told my wife, this, this is the most 80s scene of any Friday the 13th probably coming up right here. She said, well, she's actually really good. I'm like, yeah, damn, she's oh, actually Victoria. really good. Oh, she was doing it. Was <laughs> yeah. And that song is just so great, too. Oh, yeah. did you know that there's an alternate version to um, The Man Behind a Mask by Alice Cooper? Yeah, mm-hmm. there's, there's a couple. Yeah, I, I, uh, a guy shared it with me, and the second, like, this version is your total, like, 80s pop record. Like, with the keyboard set. Yes, yes. I was like, it kind of fits with the movie and the time, but I'm yeah. glad we got what we got, you know? Mm-hmm. But I never knew that, and I'm just like, wow, I thought I knew a lot about the Friday franchise. I've seen Alice Cooper a couple times within the past few years, and uh, first tour he came around here with, he did the rock version of Man Behind the Mask, and then the second time he came back through, he did Teenage Frankenstein. So he always incorporate one of the two Friday the 13th yeah. songs that he did for that soundtrack, which is so cool. Yeah, Teenage Frankenstein's a good song, too. Yeah. Yeah, the rock version of Man Behind the Mask, though, that's just badass. It is, yeah. I use it for a lot of my uh, little videos I put together because it just fits so well with it. This is hard trying to find a good song and go with what I want to do. Um, although um, a guy that I, uh, um, I'm friends with, he does, he's a musician, and he does a lot of, like, he'll do... 8-bit versions of like uh, horror themes and stuff or even like uh, he'll make rock versions of uh, NES games but he did a rock version of the song from us uh, I got five on it if that's the title or five on it mm-hmm. oh wow man did it sound awesome I'll, I'll share I'll share it on the page like yeah I I played it for my wife and I'm like see if you know what song this is because she's really good with like R&B and rap and uh, she had no idea so i said all right and i played the real song and she's like no it's not so then i i played the rock version and you could hear it in a riff you know that's awesome yeah it was really cool nice nice uh, so part four part four actually like i feel like it flowed so well like there was never a slow moment in the film nope. mm-hmm. you know i think that's one of the Friday, like part two kind of went really like it flowed really well. Part four, part six, part seven kind of drug, part eight definitely drug. Like that was just like, oh, you know, like I think that's why it's my least favorite. Part eight, yeah, yeah. I see my biggest thing with that one. I mean, it was it was a fun movie, I just didn't like that they took him away from the camp. I didn't, I didn't think it made any sense. And I didn't like how he, he doesn't cheat, like, <clears throat> he'll, as far as Jason goes with all the other ones, like, he doesn't really follow people, like, well, I mean, they don't leave the camp anyway. They don't get a chance to. But he doesn't, you know I mean, he doesn't follow them like that. He just kills them at the camp, and that's it. That besides, um, was it Alice in part two from part one? Oh, part, yeah, yeah. How, like, how did he find her? <clears throat> My question yeah. is, I wonder how far she lived away from Camp Crystal Lake. That's my one question. And yeah. two, because I remember her mother calling. She's like, "Mom, I'm, I'm okay. I just need a little. Get- I just need some time alone. I need to get away." But it's like, are you like right up the street from the camp? Because Jason, doesn't- Michael, <laughs> here. Okay, I know. I know what happened. I know exactly what happened. Jason and Michael, they they don't talk, but they know how to communicate with each other. <laughs> I found. I I figured it out. People, <clears throat> they communicated with each other. Michael drives. He picked Jason up, and you know how Michael has like G- he has GPS on Lori, so he can find anybody. He can find the other chick. <laughs> he found Alice. Jason did what he had to do, and then he got a back- ride back to camp. Boom! That's what happened, people. There it is. Problem Perfect. solved. Told him. Makes sense. <laughs> hey, at least that's something. <laughs> yeah. Because he was right back at camp, so he couldn't be too far. I still not sure how. I mean, unless he followed her home in the cop car from the police. I'm thinking camp. he probably did because it said legend had it. Jason saw his mother beheaded that night, so maybe he's he gonna did. figure out who so did. He's it. kind of a creeper. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, those, that, those are the, the continuity issues that, you know, Friday's so famous for. Um, that's, like, the one thing that really kind of gripes me as far as the look is it, you know, it changes from film to film, especially from, you have such a badass look in part seven. Oh, God. And then it goes yeah. to part eight, you know? Um, Wetsuit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the slime, but it was like his clothing was, like, deteriorating off of him. And now it's just like a couple of patches. You know what I'm wondering too? Now that you mention it is, where does Jason get all these masks from? Well, part six, he got it from Tommy. Part seven, he got it from the kids on the, the yacht or whatever. Um, couldn't tell you about part nine because it was kind of like going into his skin. So you, said, um, you said part six, he got it from Tommy? Yeah, remember when Tommy and... Um, Horse shack, bring it to the oh, and, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So like six and seven. Why the? All right. Well, we just I don't understand discuss. why they always change these things because they did the same thing with Michael Myers. Like they always gave him a different mask. It's like, yeah, why does he have <laughs> like <laughs> part part four and part six? No, part four and part six for Michael. Is it part six? No, part four and H two O five. I kind of like five though. I kind of like five's look. Because it fit. The Don look was Shanks. okay, but it was so like. <laughs> yeah, well, it fit Don Shanks' build, uh, but Part Four looked like a Kmart version of a Party City mask. So you got it looked really crappy. You go from one and two, look really cool, and then Part Four, yeah, he had to go grab it from you know the Five and Dine. Which is funny because the best one is is arguably the original one, which cost them nothing, and they yeah. spent thousands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then, and then in fast. H2O, I think they had to CGI it in because they had. If you, if you watch H2O, he has two different versions of the mask. Uh, yeah, I like the mask in uh, the Curse of Michael Myers, which I had an argument with my friend Joe Gallo, who's another Jason cosplayer, because he was saying how bad part, I guess six, the Curse of Michael Myers was, because um, we were arguing like. It was that in another film, and I'm like, how? Could, oh, he said that the Rob Zombie two was better than the the uh, Curse of Michael Myers, and we just had an all out war for like an hour mm. going back and forth because that Rob Zombie part two was garbage. I didn't like it. I'll take it over Resurrection any day. Oh, though. Resurrection should be like it should. It, Resurrection should be like the the E. T. Atari cartridges. All the copies should be buried in like a dump somewhere. You know, just forgotten <laughs> with. That was one of my favorite memes funny. of all time is the men in black guys with the wand and it says <laughs> Halloween Resurrection never happened. Yeah. I use that I like all it. the time. Anytime I see someone bring up Halloween Resurrection, I'm like, no, that one get that yeah. out of my memory. You see have Buster Rhymes doing like the wand. Yeah, you. that was Tyra <sighs> Banks. What I mean, what the uh, That was bad. Uh, you start off by killing Laurie Strode and then yes. go into this. I mean, Just, so thank God we got what we got in 2018. Now, uh. <laughs> you know what I just thought of? Because you guys mentioned it with um, the Friday, excuse me, the Friday the 13th with Jason with the different masks. Yeah. You're right how, <clears throat> I mean, I guess it makes sense as far as part six and seven, why he has that mask because Tommy and his genius friend decided to dig him up and give him the mask. <laughs> So he, they, they got him a different mask. So that makes sense. I get that. I know where you're going. I think I know where you're going. But what about Michael? Oh, you weren't going where I thought you were going. Where do you think I was going? In part six and part seven, he gets a hockey mask, but the hockey mask still has the axe mark in it. <laughs> <laughs> My friend David. In part six and part eight. Today we're like, that axe mark always comes back. Yes. That's uh, kind of it's iconic. But what were you saying about Halloween mask now? Why, why was the purpose like he like okay? Let's talk about part four and part five of Halloween. He goes in that hole, and that guy digs him out, and I guess he's in a coma for a year. I don't know. Mm-hmm. He up and puts the mask on a kid's a completely different mask. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So where did that come in? And then every single Michael Myers film from uh, after part one. And it's like, all they did was buy that William Shatner mask. Why couldn't mm-hmm. they? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think part two kind of 
closely resembled the original one. I mean, the original one's like period. I heard in part five they made it because like there was a lot more special effects and it needed to be able to weather, you know, but that was all in internal things, you know, water and stuff. And it just, and the looks, some of the looks were terrible. Some of them were fine, but it was just kind of like, where does that fit in? Why do they always have a different? Yeah. But part four, like I think it's had the worst mask, but, um, I'm sure you might know this, but, uh, Tom Morga who played, uh, Imposter Jason and Hallucination Jason in part five was also Michael Myers in part four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. For the majority of the film. And I think he got replaced like halfway through it or something like that. Now in part four, he did grab his mask at the drugstore. Yes. That explains that one. But oh, yeah, but still it looked horrible though. It looked yeah. so bad. <laughs> And this, it didn't look scary at all to me, you know, with part one and part two. It yeah. just, uh, uh, I don't know. But uh, all I can say is, if they never Same made thing another... thing with Freddy. Freddy's burns were always different. Well, his burns look great in, like, parts, I would say, one and two, they look the best. Yeah. And then in part three and then moving forward, it just, they just stopped caring about it, you know? <laughs> it just... Part looked five like, looked awful, man. Ugh. Uh, See, I, I gotta I don't know that series very well as far as like remembering it. We gotta do that one. I gotta go back and watch that. Yeah, and I actually know a couple people that would love to be on that that are big Fred fans, big Fred heads. So but I that's another franchise I wanna go through and then yeah. do a at the end do a um you know a favorite, favorite, least favorite. favorite. Which with with that one though, I think what we can do which, yes, I'm going to say this live, people, is after we're done with the Friday the 13th, once we get to Freddy vs. Jason, maybe with the Freddy vs. Jason, we can get the Fred heads on there and start from there and go through the Freddy movies and then, you know, still yeah. do our two countdowns for each, but because it's like, I'm, I put that like it with both, just because they're both in, I put it with both and that I don't want to discuss that one right now. I have my I have I my, my Nightmare on Elm Street, but when you ask me to categorize Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. I have to really think about it. And when you ask me to put Nightmare in order, I can do it like that. So, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's... I think my way. favorite Freddy, other than the original, is probably part three. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm the same. I'm not sure if it's part... But actually, it's, it's between... One, two, and three. I don't know what order they go in. Like, I got to rewatch those three because I felt like those three were all good. Part three is like the most popular, mm-hmm. the most fun. Those part two is actually one of the ones that. Favorite. Part two was actually one of the ones that a lot of people hate. Oh well, yeah. I mean, part two was creepy, but it was good. It was like the last creepy kind of scary one before yes. they got. That movie was totally part terrifying. Three had, part part three had its creepy moments, but part two, the reason yeah. it gets a lot of backlash is because of the gay undertone. Which is, right. who ca- I mean, well, at the time, you gotta remember what time it was. Good, was great. Still. That's actually a really good point, but I mean, even now, people still have, like, that problem with it, and I'm like, come on, now, let's grow up. I love part two. Like, Me I too. That's in that movie one. that just, I mean, Freddie was terrifying in it, and it was oh, dude, when he's at the, the, that didn't make the sense, party but, at the girl's house, you know, yeah. and he's killing the kids. And like when the like when the dad comes out the shotgun and he's like giving a look to the girl. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. He makes that hissing sound. That, that, yeah, yeah, that was I remember watching that. Like my parents were away. I think they went to Virginia for the week. My grandmom's babysitting me and she's staying at our house and HBO was playing it on Saturday night. And I'm like, I want to watch it, Grandma, you know? Oh, gosh. As soon as she saw, like, the first 10 minutes, she made me go to my room. Uh, <laughs> like, like the, just like the, the opening scene with the school bus, you know? Yeah. That creeped me out. And, like, the, the grounds, like, coming undone and all oh, that. Yeah. I rode a fucking school bus the time I saw that movie. So, and that uh, was first. Even like, the school bus was creepy. Oh, and I begged and begged and begged to, to watch Batman Elm Street. And my mom was like, no, 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 no. Like, Fred came over. I think my mom's boyfriend finally said, yeah, just let him watch it. We redid that. My friend fell asleep. I was by myself on that couch, and it, I was terrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't know, 10 or 11 years old. Oh, that's but awesome, though. Then I had to see part one after that, which is 
my all you know my yeah. favorite of the series but yeah part two I, I don't care about yeah, it. Yeah, and then once it got to part four, five. Of the story, it was scary as shit. Part four, yeah. no. Four, five, and six, Freddy's dead. Horrible. It's, you know, he went. I like um, part four, but a lot of that was because of nostalgic reasons. And, yeah. And the special effects at the time, but five and six, man. I still, now when I watch those, I don't watch them that often. Yeah, like, I watch, watch the first it like, three regularly. on the... If it's like on a sci-fi channel on a Sunday afternoon and there's nothing else on, like you know, he's doing the power glove thing, you know, and oh man, <laughs> and they got Roseanne and Tom Arnold. I mean, they did have Alice Cooper as his dad. That was cool. Yeah, it was so, awesome. and, they, and they actually gave Freddie like a more of his backstory, you know, yeah. which was which was cool. And I'm one of the few that probably liked the remake. You know, yeah. I liked it for what it was. I thought Jack Kerr. I didn't hate it. Job. I didn't hate it. I thought it was fine. Um, I understand some of the arguments against it. I certainly didn't expect the backlash it received. I didn't yeah. think it was that bad, especially when you think about part five and six. <laughs> I mean, I get there was no Robert England and Jackie Earl Haley's a great actor. He is. Yeah. It just wasn't the same. And I know. I was watching. Um, I have. Uh, Sir and I were talking about this. What was it the Tubi channel, sir? Yeah, Tubi. Yeah, yeah. Tubi. I think it was on Tubi where they had the Mani- Maniac Cop trilogy. So yes. when I was sick a couple of weeks ago, I was just like, I'm just going to watch whatever crap movie, you know, B, C, D, E movies. So I watched the Maniac First Cop Campbell. movies. And in Maniac Cop 3, Jackie Earl Haley is in the beginning. He's uh, wow. the guy holding up the convenience store or the drugstore. And I was like, I didn't recognize him at first because he had, like, long, curly hair, you know, his, um, what do they call it, mullet-type thing. So, yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a good actor. But um, but no franchise, whatever, to me, in my opinion, is as great as Friday the 13th. Yeah, I even, though, even though the idea was taken from Halloween, <laughs> so with the original script. <clears throat> Let's, you know what? Let's say it upgraded. It was up. Yeah. It was an upgrade. Yeah. yeah, Halloween. Yeah, Halloween's my favorite of all time. Like the first film. Mm-hmm. As a series, Friday the Thirteenth is the one that that I could come back. To yeah, like with Halloween, like I love the style that John Carpenter did with the directing, the score. Mm-hmm. And there was no blood. Bro. There was no blood. He scared you with the music and just the the shape. Yeah, you know, you're right. And in part two, that's when they wanted more, more blood, you know. So I agree. So, anywho, but uh, another great time is always. I mean, the last time we recorded was before Thanksgiving, I think. That's yes. Yeah, that's, that's a while ago. We got, let's 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 try to record way before Thanksgiving. <laughs> for our next episode. I mean, as far as yeah. the Friday the Thirteenth stuff goes. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because uh, we just don't want it to end. It's yeah. It's oh man, it's so fun. Like we always do this too. I mean, this is how my shows always go. Be reviewing a movie and then just go on a rant, a big horror rant of all the movies. <laughs> and jump back into this one and go back. And, but it works, and I love it. So, and we keep you know going. What, another movie I'm looking forward to. Totally not even in the this franchise or Halloween or uh, Michael or uh, Freddy is Candyman. Yes. Yeah, yeah I can't yes. wait for that because I'm actually biggest jordan peele fan like i did not like get out but i liked us i liked us i liked get out i did not watch us yet okay um see a lot of people hated us i thought it, i liked it a lot yeah i gotta go i gotta see that i gotta watch it i just gotta sit down and watch it one day but i, I just did candy man the original candy with my brother oh. well, I, technically this morning because he lives out in colorado so we did that like 1 30 in the morning our time east coast hmm. time but uh, yeah, that's that's sacred ground. I mean, well, I, I, you know, guess the one thing with Jordan Peele, he uses his movies for like the current events with the racial tension and whatnot. But even though he's not directing, well, I don't even think he wrote. I think he's just producing it. This is producing. This is right up his alley because that's the whole tone of the Candyman movie. Mm-hmm. 
you know, is the racial tones. Um, the first thing I picked up on, though, was who the protagonist is. And I'm sure uh, you guys might have, too, because he said, I have a connection to this place. He is the little baby at the end of the original Candyman that Helen saved from the fire. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I just like I, I'm curious as to who they casted as Candyman. I don't think they announced that. I I don't. It's not Tony happen. Todd's in it, but he I don't. He's think. probably playing like the the mortician, like he was in <laughs> Final Destination. Final Destination, or the this the or just someone that he's probably gonna play the old timer in the in, probably an old resident of Cabrini Green. That's probably who he's going to play. I think he could have done Candyman again. He could have. I mean, he still looks good for his age. He's still, you know, he's aged well. Um, mm -hmm. He's just, he's another guy that, he's a B actor that does anything for a buck. Um, but I think he still has the chops to play Candyman. Because I would too. have to say, that's probably, like, I, did, I never got scared of really... Honestly, any of the Freddies or Fridays or the Halloweens, but when I saw Candyman for the first time, that creeped me out. Yeah, like, that was creeped creepy. Me out. And I was probably yeah. like 11 or 12 when I first saw it. Clive Barker. Yeah. <clears throat> with um, with the candy. well, first we got a question, and but I'll, I'll answer that question. I'll ask the question, we'll answer it in a second. But with Candyman, with the, the <laughs> new trailer or whatever, there is a, if you watch it again, watch it slow and watch, there's actually breakdowns of it. There's a part where the protagonist is, I believe he's outside. You see Candyman's reflection in, yeah. I want to say, a car mirror, and it's Tony Todd. Really? But it's from, like, I believe it's from when he was younger, obviously, but it's like him, mm. you know what I mean? It's like that Candyman. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, somehow I feel like he passes the torch. I'm not 100% sure how. In a sense, uh -huh. I just there, I I feel those who have some sort of connection. But uh, the question was, if Candyman had a long had a long run, you know, like the Big Three, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare, and Halloween, do you think it would get campy? Well, I mean, the sequels that followed <laughs> were like straight to DVD, yeah. which I don't understand why because the original was just so good. I. I don't think it would because of the, I don't know, because he had, a, he had a greater backstory, you know, if you think about his backstory. He had a he, really good backstory. He actually, honestly, Candyman had probably one of the, as far as like, because you wouldn't really, I mean, you can call it kind of a slasher, but more, more than just a slasher because it really had a story to it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. The, the big three that I'll say, they really, I'm not saying they have kind of stories. Then there's like different versions of the stories, but they don't really have like a, a deep rooted story like his does that, you know what I mean? It was a real powerful story. And it was, it was one of those type of horror movies with gory kills that you're watching the movie to watch the movie. You're not necessarily watching the movie to watch, you know, to watch the kills. I'm not saying you don't want to see the kills, but you're watching the movie. Cause I just rewatched it the other night. I'm like, wow this is a really good fucking movie and has a really good deep story to it. Like you're mm -hmm. watching it for the story and Very psychological. Yeah. And I do wish, I mean, it might've been good that it only had three movies. Maybe if it had one or two more cool, but I feel like, you know what they could do, which I was just thinking while you were talking, mm -hmm. why not a prequel, you know, start half of the movie like they did with the remake of Halloween, maybe okay. the first half an hour, 45 minutes of seeing him, have the relationship with the, the woman and then he gets lynched and then he comes back and kills the guys who lynch him, you know? That'd I could be, see that. Yeah. That would be fun too, but I just feel like out of all those, you know, if he, that's one really, really good, good story and shit, I hope, I hope with this candy man, I mean, yeah, you hope there's kills and obviously there's going to be kills and I hope there's some cool kills in it. But I hope they stick with that part of a really good deep, you know, a really good story that just right. had you sit on the edge of your seat well, like the whole time. Jordan Peele is a good storyteller. And he is. Like us, like I really like the story of us and, you know, all the, like the, the, uh, the revelation. So I'm hoping yeah. he assisted with the, the screenplay, you know, because if yeah. he did, I think we'll get a. A good sure movie is not better than the original movie. 
I'm just curious as to what, you know, who's playing them. You know, I don't want it to be Jamie yeah. Fox. You know, no, I think Smith. it's I think it's gonna be um the Anthony. Well, Smith. No, it won't be him. Okay. <laughs> I think it's gonna be Anthony. I think it's gonna be the 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 grown man who was the baby from the first mm-hmm. one. I feel like he's gonna be Candyman and I just think it's gonna be really interesting, honestly. I, that's one movie where like with horror, I try my best, and it's too damn hard because we all love horror so much. But I try my best to have low expectations. That way, I'm not disappointed. Like you go to see the movie, like, hey, that movie was. I have low expectations. Hey, that movie wasn't half bad, or that movie was fucking awesome. But when you have those high expectations, like I did for um, Pet Cemetery, and I was very disappointed. Yeah. I, it's just hard not to because I'm like, the trailer looks so good. I just re I just rewatched the original and yeah. I just feel and Jordan Peele, like you just said, he's a really good storyteller. And I'm really hoping that that just goes into this movie. I hope they don't do too much to where it's just I hope they don't too don't do too much to where um I'll go back again to the kills where they make like a kill scene look like, oh my god, that kill scene looks so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. But the story just lags. Like I rather the story I rather the story be amazing for this movie. And even if the kills were kind of toned down, because again, in the original, there was what, three, four kills, mm-hmm. five max. Yeah. And yes, they were good. Yes, they were powerful. A lot of them you didn't really see. You seen them like being done, but you didn't really see them on screen. Like you mm-hmm. seen the person's reaction to getting killed. Right. Uh-huh. And I'm fine with that too. And that's, that's just for can like for candy, man, for Friday the 13th, that would piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, but again, Friday the 13th, we're, we're watching those movies. We're all Jason fans. But we're watching those movies, same with Halloween, same with Freddy. You're watching those movies, not necessarily for the story, but you're watching those movies to be like, okay, how are these guys going to kill somebody? And are we going to see titties? That's pretty much it. <laughs> Candyman, I don't even, like, you've seen some, but I wasn't even really, th- I'm lying, I'm always thinking about them. But I wasn't really like, like if okay, for the new one, if they're, if they're not in there, it's not going to bother me at all. Yeah. If there's again, if there's not an amazing kill, it's not going to bother me at all. But if the story sucks, or that's going to be a very big disappointment because it's one of those things where you just like, wow, this this I came here to see this story. I want to be like blown away by the story. All right. Um, I had another I thought and just that quick. Oh, okay. So speaking of like. Reboots, remakes. What is everyone's thought on the new Saw movie with Chris Rock? <laughs> I'll let you guys go first for this one. I I don't know. I don't have faith. <laughs> it's it's very hard to see a comedic actor do drama for the first time. I don't think Chris Rock's ever done drama or you know he's done action, but I don't know. I mean, we just got done with the Saw franchise like what a year or two ago Mm -hmm. and they're doing it all over again and i i I don't know i have i have to see more you know more trailer another trailer so i don't yeah i'm not so sure i mean at first i thought okay you know whatever we'll see i actually thought jigsaw was pretty good but now it's being called something else a saw story yeah uh this just kind of sounds like, you know, how the Conjuring movies are doing like 14,000 different. A yeah. Tale. yeah, it's a cash grab, basically. Yeah. I just I'm not makes me wonder if there's really much stock in it or if it's just. Yeah. You know, people, some torture devices. Saw kind of did that, too. Loved the first Saw. Even mm-hmm. the first three. I thought part three, mm-hmm. when you said that was the end. I thought that was a good way to end it. Yeah. And then, okay, well, here's the prequel. Okay, well, then the prequel kept going and kept going. Mm-hmm. It's like, God dang. Yeah, the timeline, if you're not paying attention, the timelines are all over the place and you get confused, yeah. you know? So. I think with... um, Saw's one of those movies, like, I enjoyed the whole franchise. It was just, it was a fun franchise for me. Similar, different type of story, different type of movie, but similar to uh, Final Destination movies. Mm-hmm. Like, I could just go back and watch them over and over again. But um, with this, that's kind of what I'm expecting with this one. Like, I feel like it's going to be a fun movie. I feel like it's going to be a good time. Um, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, though. I really do. And I've like, uh, I'll say this because I feel Jordan Peele 
Not as, he wasn't a stand-up comedian, but he was a comedic actor, you know, with his show, Key and Peele and all that. And I feel comedians have, like, that kind of different, uh, what is it, like, kind of a fucked up mindset to where they can, just because they have to make, just because you, you, if you think about it, they have to make us laugh in bad times. They make, like, a horrible moment hilarious. Right. So I feel like he can use that same type of thought, because isn't he helping direct the movie or no, Chris? I don't know. I'll look it up right now. Hold on. But even with his acting, I feel like he because he did play a serious role back with um. Well, he was Pookie in New Jack City. There you go. I mean, I know he was playing a crackhead, but it was still like a kind of a serious role. I love that movie. (laughs) And then I feel I don't know. I just feel that this movie is going to really surprise people. I I'm hoping it's going to be dark, but. I can see it having some comedic relief to it. I can ha- kind of, sort of. But we'll s- I guess we'll have yeah, to see, it's, man. Like, it's called... Um, the movie itself is called Spiral from the Book of Saw. That is a weird... From the Book of Saw. Yeah. It's... I don't know what to feel about it yet. That, that's one that like I want to watch. I probably won't go... I don't think I'll jump out to the theater to see it, but I do want to see it. It's not one I'm rushing to see. Samuel L. Jackson's also in it, and I'm a fan yes. of both of them. But I just put it this way: Candyman, I'm going to see that. As yeah. you know, as long as this Corona bullshit's over with, I'm going to see that in theaters. Saw, I'm going to watch that from home. Yeah, yeah. and this is the uh, director's first film, so he's got a lot riding. <laughs> he see, but again, he. I feel like I mean, again, as far as like. I don't know if it's going to add on to the story. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a remake so or a the side story, story. The story is by Chris Rock. So he didn't write it. He came up with the idea. Okay. Yeah. So that that puts some more interest in it for me. Just because, like I said, with the, with the comedians, like I said, they have to make us laugh at bad times. And just, you know, what, what goes on in their minds, I'm sure they can put that on paper as far as, not everybody, but I'm sure they can put that on paper as far as like a, a fucked up type of movie, similar to like a Saw. And I just... I don't know. I, I hope it's a good movie. I don't expect it to be great. Like I said, I don't have high expectations for that. Candyman, I have high expectations for it. I'm trying not to. But it'll be fun, though. I think it'll be fun at the very least. It'll probably be at least a, at the very least, I think it'll be a good one to two time watch. This is just yeah. from seeing the trailer and just from my, yeah. my guess. Honestly, I would feel the same way regardless of who's doing it. I mean, at this point, I'm kind of like... Not if Nicolas Cage is doing it. That right there... <clears throat> I would watch it because again it's horror. But you gotta watch color out as I don't know if you'd like that or not, man. It's, it's like, funny you say that because it's it's in that horror genre kind of one of my friends, he has a podcast, my boy Anthony, uh it's called Video Game Crosstalk. If you guys are into video games, technology and science, fun podcast. But he knows how I feel about Nicolas Cage. So what does he want to do? That movie. What movie? <laughs> what movie? Color out of space. Color out of space. Oh, okay. And it's I was a like, Lovecraft adaptation, and mm-hmm. one are faithful. So if you're into that type of stuff, they did a really great job with it. It's bizarre, it's strange, it's weird, but it, I thought it was good. Yeah, you know what I watched on Netflix about two weeks ago was A Girl on the Third Floor with uh, CM Punk. How was How that? Was it? <clears throat> it was a character study. It's, it's okay. pretty much... Basically, he goes and, and buys this house, and he's remodeling it for him and his wife. And it's kind of like you know, think of like Jack Torrance being taken over by the the hotel. But it it introduces uh, people come and interact with him. Um, I felt like the ending, what they just went a little too much with it. It could have ended a little bit sooner. Um, mm. But for CM Punk, like. Did you guys see the remake of Rabbit by the Sofka sisters? No. Okay. I have not watched that yet. It's not that bad. And CM Punk is in him. Oh, I got to watch it. I love is CM it? Punk. Okay. And he's got this very small bit role in it. And he plays like your typical North Jersey, New York guy, you know, like that, just like the uh, toolbox, you know. Mm-hmm. But then he goes from that to being this guy in this movie, The Girl on the Third Floor. And because of how his performance was, they were saying, man, if they ever remade um, The Evil Dead, he should play Ash. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. They are doing another Evil Dead. 
Yeah, now, is it going to be a sequel to the one, like, the remake, or a whole, like, a remake? They haven't said yet, but Raimi's on board, and mm. Bruce Campbell, I mean, as a producer. Mm. I hope so. I thought the remake was fantastic. And yeah, I like the remake. I'm not a big Evil I Dead fan, but I love Army of Darkness. Uh, see, I'm so glad with the remake that they went a completely different direction. Yeah. With it, yeah. That it had the right people involved with it. Mm-hmm. Start to notice a trend here. All these horror movies that go out and do new sequels, that they get these people who have never, you know, I hate to say it, but like Freddy versus Jason, they get somebody who's never watched either franchise, knows nothing about them, to make a film with these iconic characters. And look what happens when they do it with Halloween. They bring in fans to make them, and it goes over well. They yeah, bring- and not only fans, but they were... One of them was a comedian, which I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. And he totally just like blew my mind. I she had the creator. It's it, when you get, and they listen to fans to an extent. I mean, it's like, I feel sometimes everybody's trying to make their own mark and they're trying to do it on this sacred territory. And it just, it pisses people off. It's yeah. like 10 albums in one genre that decide to change to another genre. It's like, right. how many new fans are you going to gain versus the ones you're going to lose? Like, I, I was talking to, um, I forget who I was talking to. It might have been when I was in Blairstown and we were talking about fan films. But I said, um, if, like, the lawsuit, you know, was finalized today and tomorrow and we start a film, who should they get to direct? Yeah, I know Tommy McLaughlin wants to make, uh, you know, his Friday, but put Vince DeSanti in it you know look at that movie he made yeah like he yeah. for for independent fan films and i said this so many times he has set the blueprint of how a fan film can be done i know? agree and like with jason rise and james sweet he i think this is going to be a never like another never hiking alone type movie just in that four and a half minutes that i saw even from the trailers i was hooked but that four and a half minutes, it brought you back to the feel of part three and part four. It I, yeah. Yeah. And that's the, I actually, I really agree with you on that. It would be really cool if they, um, I would say Friday the 13th, because we're talking, because you just mentioned that, and we're talking about part four, the fan films, <clears throat> if they got the people who made the fan films together, they're kind of brainstorm and make a full length feature film. I feel they can do it. I mean, if say they all get along, I don't know if they do or not. Say they all really like work together good. I see you shaking your head no, but let's just say they all get along and they all work together good. And they just come up with something amazing. Or I haven't seen all the fan films, so let's say the best two fan films out of all the fan films that come out for Friday the 13th, let's say the best two fan films, which in my opinion, I feel like Never Hike Alone would be hard to beat. So let's throw that in there. And then whoever else is next, those two guys, those two teams work together and make Friday the 13th part 13. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, fan films, were you aware that they're making a Freddy Krueger fan film? Yes. Is it like a sequel to uh, New Nightmare? They're making a Chuck. Yeah, it's about Dylan, right? Yes. And have you, have you seen a trailer for it? I have not, but I know that he's back. Gabe. Yeah. Yeah. Secretary, I mean, uh, the, yeah, he's in it, and it's like basically it's just uh, you hear Freddie narrating it, and you see Dylan sleeping, but he's got Rex next to his bed for the little yeah, dinosaur. okay, yeah. I didn't um, see that. Yeah, and they're also uh, a, a guy I knew through social media. He does a Jason cosplay, and this dude is Jack. Like he could give uh, Kane Hodder a run for his money. Like he's like the same height, but just jacked. And he did a killer Jason Goes to Hell cosplay. Like, it got people talking. Well, you know, three months later, he's going to be in a fan film. And it's Freddy versus Jason. (coughs) But it's actually going to be in the Jason Goes to Hell timeline. Like, when Freddy gets the, comes up and grabs the the hockey mask. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in that timeline. But I don't know if there's going to be. See, I don't know if it's going to, there's going to be flashbacks and whatnot because they casted a guy to play Creighton Duke, but he's much younger than the Williams character, and they casted a girl to play Baby Jessica. 
Yeah. So um, I haven't talked. The guy who plays J- Jason is Cody Huskins. Um, so he runs a couple of groups like uh, Man Behind the Mask and Huskins Horror Studio, and he 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 builds all his costumes like him and his dad do, it, and, they're, and they're really good. Like his part seven is nice. Um, but he, man, when I saw him, I did a confession as a cosplayer for him. When he did this Jason Goes to Hell, like, he looked great. That's awesome. Yeah. They're doing a Chucky fan film, too. Yeah, called Charles, Charles. right? No, yeah. Charles, yep. that, yeah. look, that trailer I did see, wow. Wow. Like, that is... I'll put it to you like this. It looks better than the past few Child's Play movies that came out. Like the ones on Netflix or the reboot? All of them. And I, I now listen, I might be in the uh, minority here, not just because I'm black this time. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I, I love the reboot. I really enjoyed the reboot. I'm yeah. being a minority with you. Thank Me you. too. I was ready to hate that film. I didn't go see it in the theaters because I thought he's a fucking robot. I mean, I, I wasn't mad that they were. I mean, I guess Don Mancini kind of got shafted. Yeah, he, yeah, he had nothing. He got nothing. Very to disrespected this. on it, and I was yeah. kind of pissed about that. But I, that tends to happen when they do the remakes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that they I gave him emotions, and you felt bad for him, like yeah. when he was trying to kill the cat the first time, and Andy's yelling at him. Yeah, and he didn't know what he was doing. He just. He saw the cat being mean to Andy. They really made it work because at first I thought this sounds dumb as shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want a voodoo serial killer in here, but yeah. When I watched the movie, I, I was. <laughs> it worked. My, wife, was my like, friend um, was actually Kyle, pretty good. I met him at the museum. He's a volunteer at the museum. He lives out in Ohio. He, he saw it in the theaters like over probably twelve times. I don't know the Damn. exact number. Dirty. But he has like all the props from the movie and like he you know just bought a house and made a really cool like movie theater slash man cave and in the one part of his room he's got like the props from the movie that's and awesome he's got the cell phone that andy used in the movie and when he powered it up the kid who played andy was taking behind the scene videos with it so like that was cool. Nice. Like, he has the clothing. He has like the leg that was chopped off. That's so. He cool. has he has the drill. I mean, he has everything. He also just got the Bronco that Michael Myers stole from the father and son in the 2018. Mm-hmm. Like he won it in an auction, what? and James Drew Courtney like autographed the inside of it. I think Jimmy Lee Curtis did. Um, so that's oh. like, yeah, that's at his, cause I'm like, <laughs> man, I like, he has a museum of child's play and then he's got the darn Bronco from the 2018 <laughs> Halloween signed by, um, James. OJ Gordon. Simpson. <laughs> OJ Simpson. Damn, I just have a bunch of Nika dolls and <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't gone to the cars to, yet. That's a Bronco to get. What the OJ Simpson one? Yeah. Autographed. <laughs> 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 but um I guess we could jump into our ratings for Friday the thirteenth part four <clears throat> the final chapter. Um and now you guys know it's one to ten ratings. I'm trying to think of like a fun thing to do. I've done Jason Mass before, I've done the What was it? Corkscrew. Okay, out of one to ten corkscrews, what would you guys give <laughs> Friday the thirteenth? Part four, and this question goes to the listeners too. Out of one to ten corkscrews, how many corkscrews would you give this movie? Feel free to call in if you can. If not, just type right in the chat. Or is it a dead fuck? Which one? Ah, how many dead de- fucks? <laughs> how many dead? Yes, yes. <laughs> how many dead fucks? Because dead fucks was like a big, big thing for this. So scratch just put the it in the computer and let us know. <laughs> I will. I'll, this I'll, time I'll, it's a real guys, computer too. After you guys all go, I'll go last. Okay. And Dad, do you want to go first? Lance yeah. said six dead fucks. Henrik mm-hmm. said five dead fucks. Go ahead, Dad. I'll give it seven. Seven ah, dead okay. fucks. Well, I'm giving it a ten because this is my favorite film. Oh, yes. 
this, this besides Never Hike Alone, this is the first Friday the 13th people that got a 10. Count them. 10 dead fucks by Brian. <laughs> and it sounds bad in a way. I'm going to change mine to eight because of Ted White. Ah. Uh, okay. <sighs> it's all down to this, people. All down to you. Let me type. I would want to see the guy who rated it a five. I want to. I would love to hear what why he rated it like kind of low. Henry, why did you give this movie a five? And I'm gonna give it a. I'm typing in the computer. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Okay. Enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. For me personally, I don't know if I'd give. Any Friday the 13th films a 10, even though it's my favorite franchise. And I've given other horror movies 10s in this, on this show, but... What's a 10 in your eyes? Just, like, name one. Uh, a 10? Yeah. I, give, I believe I gave Jaws a 10 or a 9. Okay. <laughs> you know what I gave a 10 to? Was, the, was uh, the Thing. <laughs> ah, yeah. The Thing. I gave that a 10. But the funny thing is, like, with me, like, I know I give movies certain ratings don't really mean much to me as far as, like, what I would watch. Because I gave those a 10. I probably gave things killing, like, a 6 or a 7. I don't remember. But I'd watch Friday the 13th over Jaws or over The Thing. Even though they might be better movies and look better and all that good stuff, better stories. But this movie just attracts me. This movie's, I, I'm attached to it. I've been watching it since I was a kid. That could be a big thing of it. I'm kind of the and same. And Henry way. said... Uh, he right. said, I'm neutral on the film. He's kind of, he's just <laughs> in the middle of it. Okay. He's, he's one of the front. Oh, before you came in here, Henry, I was talking to uh, Brian and Thad. And once we're done with the Friday the 13th franchise, as far as our reviews of it, we're going to do another countdown for it. But we're going to do Freddy vs. Jason, which I'm going to say it right now. We should do Freddy vs. Jason after the remake. That way we can add that Fred heads in and then do Freddy. Okay. So when we get to Freddy vs. Jason, Henry, we want you in here. And like one or two other Freddy fans, like big Freddy fans, and we're gonna do, you know, when we can all record, go through each movie and you know, give our reviews, and then at the end of all the reviews, <laughs> all those episodes, we're gonna do a countdown. But uh yeah, so fun movie though. Part four. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it because I do not remember. I've watched it that many times. I can say for all of them. The first uncensored one I've seen. Say that again? It was the first uncensored one I saw. I saw really? it on HBO at my aunt's house. Wasn't supposed I, to. I can't even tell you which one was the first one I seen, like uncensored, because I, I again, back in the day, I remember watching these on the USA Network on fr the Friday the 13th mm -hmm. weekend. They'd show them all weekend. I would just watch whatever ones came on TV, I would just watch them. And when the I cool. Watching part three was on all the time. Yes, yes. You know, I feel like three was on a lot. Five was on a lot. Seven was probably on a lot too. Three, five, and seven, maybe yeah. six. Part seven is the first one I saw in theaters. Nice. Yeah. That was a fun experience. I was by myself. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> I will say, all right, I got another question for every, this is for everybody. Now for everybody, if you remember the final chapter, we just watched, well, I just finished it kind of sort of, um, What's one thing you would change about this movie? I'm not even gonna say if anything. What's one thing you would change about this movie? The twins' outfits. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if anybody says Crispin, more. <laughs> if anybody says Crispin Glover's dance, you're a liar. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lee. <laughs> I would not change a thing about Crispin Glover. In that nah, not at all. <laughs> nope. My brother said full frontal. I agree. That would, that wouldn't be bad, <laughs> but can you imagine the bush? More boobs. Good answer, Lance. So full frontal and more boobs. So we have perverts in here, which I'm one of them. <laughs> I also would not have killed Judy first or Samantha. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> first, <laughs> well, not first, but you know, first of the group. Yeah. Well, who would you kill first? The way he said, someone said the way Tommy killed Jason and my brother, another ridiculous, another wild answer. First, he says full frontal. Now he's, he loves feet. 
He's saying more feet. <laughs> well, well, the twins did a little handstand in the water. Yeah, uh, yeah Henry, the twins did a handstand in the water. You can pa- pause that. <laughs> but somebody what? said, "Fuck!" Tom. He said, "All right." Someone, so someone said, "The way Tommy Jarvis killed Jason." And my brother said, "Man, fuck Tommy Jarvis." <laughs> well, what was the wrong? With That's the who I would have killed, killed first. Uh, Tommy Jarvis, Jason. me too. I mean, he got that machete right in the temple. Mm-hmm. And then when he fell down, you know, he's sliding down and his eyes going all this way. I mean, it would have been cool to see him chop Jason up on the back, you know. Um, Originally, he was supposed to cut the top of his head off like a cantaloupe. And then they realized that maybe they weren't going to quit. <laughs> yeah, and I can't see a tenure having face. a strength yeah. to chop someone's <laughs> head off, though. Um yeah, I don't know if I would change anything with the movie. Um, it could be it could be something silly too. Anything. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Uh, yeah, I always wondered why the mom when she goes into the house, she's like, "Tommy, where's Trish?" Well, wait a minute, where are you? Like, it just didn't make sense. Like, you came from a run. You're not in a drunken stupor. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Henry said, "If Corey Feldman kills you, you deserve to die." <laughs> <laughs> he, but, but we were talking about what actors we don't like. He doesn't like Corey Feldman at all yeah. because of and a big reason is because it has nothing to do with killing Jason. It's because, just because of how he is now and with the whole thing that he should have released and talked about instead of trying to make money off it, just saying yeah. like who these people were. He's in so many movies that I love, like, just love, but like not. Puppet Master. <laughs> he's in them. <laughs> Puppet Master versus the, the um, Demonic Toys. He that did such a horrible that. job in that. Was he, like, uh, Toulon? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember, like, seeing bits of it in that horrible German accent. Like, that's another franchise <laughs> I got to revisit because I was first introduced to the Puppet Master films on USA Up All Night with... Uh, Littlest Reich. Yeah, the little and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I want to though. And isn't Blade getting his own standalone film? I think I, I someone I think said. So. Littlest Reich is awesome. Is it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh. We got another question. It's uh, how many times can Jason? <laughs> how many times can Jason keep falling for somebody dressing up like him or his mother? Oh, it only happened twice. <laughs> but I mean, dressing up as him. Shouldn't have confused him because he is himself. His mother, I guess I get it to an extent. Well, maybe he just saw his younger self like a mirror image, you know? Because that's, cause he, that's probably what he last remembers himself being is that young boy. And, you know, we don't know what his childhood was like after he quote unquote drowned. Like, and he that's was like, high. <laughs> and I that's think like he's what, just confused. I think he's like, wait, what the fuck? What? Yeah. yeah, he yeah. was high. That, you yeah. smoke a lot of weed, you're confused like that, real dude. easy. And the Camp Crystal but, Lake, I'm sure Jason can grow some really good and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of like the cool thing with the uh, fan film coming out. His name is Jason. It's kind of telling you what Jason was doing in the woods. Um, like, he's not wearing the uh, the, the coveralls or overalls, whatever you want to call them, as he is in part two. Mm-hmm. But you do see someone who's wearing them, so it kind of gives you like a foreshadowing. Ah, nice, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. My my friend Dave is doing like little Easter eggs like that. Um, so it's kind of giving you a story because no one's really no fan film except for like one fan film that meh. Um, this is like an older one, way before like Never Hike Alone came out. Really talked about Sackhead Jason. Yeah. So. I'm really interested in seeing it and Ron Milky's in it and just with the trailer Ron's in, I was just like, yeah, because Ron's such a cool guy. So I also and think hope- Sarah get laid before she got killed. What's that? I think they should have let Sarah got laid before she got killed. Yeah. yeah well, you know, it's got a big move. It was on Jason's part, but you know, she died when she did because she broke the sin of, she was on her way. She was on her way. You know, she was the the girl next door. Probably went to church every Sunday with her family. You know how bad that would suck, though. And we're all happily married, man. But just, just, just imagine, like <clears throat> back in your single savage days, there's one chick you're about to just destroy, or at least you think you're gonna. 
and Jason comes and kills you before you can even do anything. Like she finally says yes, dead. Yeah. That's the thing. They they make the case of, you know, this this movie, you know, warns about the dangers of premarital sex, but you can't really argue it for part four. You go either way. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. You know what it is? Maybe it's because these people weren't wearing protection and Jason's trying to stop them from getting STD, so he just kills them. Very well could be. Good man. Good man. That's a good condom commercial. You don't wrap yeah. up, Jason will kill you. <laughs> Planned parent parenting, you know, or whatever by Jason. Put a oh, man. Head, man. <laughs> I got another question for you guys. For the final chapter, we've seen all the kills in the movie. How would you want to die in this movie if you were in this movie? Uh, Me? Thrown through a window. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want a harpoon in my crotch. No, I'm going to put that one at the very end of the <laughs> entire franchise. Let's yeah, well, although falling to your death, you still have like that few seconds before you die, and you're like, oh, shit. Because um, there is no quick death in this film at all, except for, yeah, there is no quick death. Maybe Teddy. True. Maybe yeah, Teddy. Yeah, yeah. You get a knife to your brain, it's, you're not going to last very long, you know? Yeah, definitely. Kind of had to go through the whole mm -hmm. course through before you got the cleaver. Yeah, that's rough. Just throw me through a window. It's my favorite kill in the movie. Just, you know. We got two answers. Henry said, thrown through a window. Lance said, dead fuck. <laughs> dead fuck dance of death. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> but, um, this was a fun, fun Still, time. As always, <laughs> yes. I really appreciate you guys coming on once again. And I know we got to, we got to schedule something. <clears throat> oh, Henry said thrown into a window, not through a window, thrown into a window. My my fault. I apologize. Stop yelling at me. And I'm oh so I'm sorry for calling you Henry. Right, good fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that was funny. Outside to in so he wants to get thrown into a window outside, then <laughs> to in outside to inside is how he wants to die. Okay. Would you want okay, Henry? My question to you is: You said outside, inside. Would you want people to be like chilling inside, watching TV, hanging out with their family, eating food or something? Or you just want like an empty house or cabin? How do you want this to happen? I want to get thrown out of a window, like outside or inside to outside. People watching TV—that's how he wants it. Okay, as long Got as it's it. like Rick in Part Three, get his eye popped out and then thrown. Mm -hmm. Ooh, <clears throat> ooh. That's that's I'll tough. Kill the 3D movie. The 3D movie was fun. I love part three, even in the 2D version. Love yeah. It. Even though it's boobless. It's boobless, you said. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> part three is. You're right. Part four stepped it up. Part five. <laughs> the Set the standard. <laughs> I think it had the most nudity out of all of them. Yeah, it did. Part six they didn't have any. My wife when we watched that on Friday the 13th, she's like, Every girl here takes a shirt off or is not wearing a bra. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean directed by a porn filmmaker. I mean yep. <laughs> They're at camp. It's hot out. They need to breathe. Hey. Got and and we're all about equal rights with women. We can walk around with their with our shirts off. Why can't they? You know, we're all about that. They can. I'm just saying, that's that's how we are in this podcast. We're all about everybody and everything, <laughs> especially boobs. We all love them. Nicholas Cage. <sighs> yeah, Nicholas Cage. That's different. <laughs> that that's. Uh, I'm so glad he wasn't in any of the, any of these movies. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he's what gonna play Jason. Have, in the you watch. know how mad, how upsetting it would be, like if they had instead of Crispin Glover, if they just decided to use Nicholas Cage, he would have ruined the dance. Nobody could do that dance. No. Yeah. It would not be a memorable scene. No was, I don't even think he could do the dance again himself. <laughs> yeah. Prickless Cage. There we go. Prickless Cage. Oh, man. Lance is over here talking crazy. I think he's drunk. He said Nicholas Cage is life. <laughs> <clears throat> he's, he's, he's drinking, though, so uh. you got to ignore that. <laughs> 
<laughs> cheers, Lance. But um, I'm going to say cheers to everybody listening. Yes, cheers. We're going to end this here. You guys stay put. You t- One, two. You two stay put. And uh, thank you all for uh, joining us in this chat, this live podcasting. It's going to keep happening from here on out. I had a great time. Next time, people, don't be afraid to call in. Enjoy the rest of your night. And um, as always, I'll see you in your nightmares. And fuck you, Nicolas Cage. (laughs) Love the new ending.